हेलो गाइस इट इज शिवम यर वेलकम टू आर ऑसम फ्लटर फायर बेस ई कॉमर्स ऐप और फूड डिलीवरी ऐप वेयर वी आर डेवलपिंग द कंप्लीट ऐप फ्रॉम स्क्रैच विद एडमिन पैनल दिस वीडियो विल कवर सेटिंग ऑफ फायर बेस एज आर बैकहेंड डिजाइनिंग स्टर्निंग यूजर इंटरफेस इंप्लीमेंटिंग सिक्योर यूजर ऑथेंटिकेशन ऑर्डर ट्रैकिंग पेमेंट प्रोसेसिंग एंड मेनी मोर सो डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू हिट दैट लाइक बटन डाउन बिलो Our goal for this video is of 500 likes and also subscribe our channel so you won't miss out on any of the upcoming video we upload on this channel. So now let's get started. But before moving to the code, let me show you what all things we will learn on today's video and how your app will look alike at the end of this video. So here you can see the onboarding screen of our food delivery app and here on the first screen of our onboarding page here it is written select from our best menu pick your food from our menu more than 35 times now when i will click to the next button here then it will directly take us to the second onboarding page where it is written easy and online payment you can pay cash on delivery and card payment is available now click on next again so again here comes our third page of our onboarding screen now quick delivery at your doorstep deliver your food at your doorstep now when i click to the start button here it will directly take us to the sign up page from where the user can create a account and can directly move inside the app as i have told you i will also tell the user authentication in this food delivery app from the scratch where i will first tell you how to connect the app with the firebase then we will use a email authentication in our flutter app so you will also get to know more about the authentication in this complete video of food delivery app now let's move to the sign up page again and here on the name i will write the user name so i will use my name here so i will write shivang gupta so in the email i will use a uh, some random email here so i will write shivam 3456 at the rate gmail.com and the password now when i will click to the sign up button then as you can see we have registered successfully and directly move to the home page of the app so our email authentication is working brilliantly now let's move to the login page and i will use a same email id that i have just used to sign up in the app so i will write shivam3456 at the rate gmail.com in our login page and i will use a same password now when i click to the login button so as you can see we have successfully log in inside the app by using the same email that i have just used to sign up in the app so as you can see we are doing all these things by using the firebase authentication and by using the flutter packages don't need to worry of how to add all these things in the our flutter app i will tell you each and every step to how to add the authentication in our flutter app and how to connect a firebase for both android and ios but i have a small request from you please do not skip any of the process from this video because each and every step is necessary for you to get the end result that i have just shown you now now let's move to the login page here again and in the login page for an instance if the user have forgotten the password for some email id then here they will click on the forgot password text and directly it will take him to the password recovery screen from where they can change the password easily by the email so i will enter the email again here now when i will click to the send email button then it suggests that password reset email has been set so it will send us a link in our email from where we can change the password for the firebase now let's move to the email here and here you can see the link that i just got from the firebase now when i click to the link then it will suggest us to reset your password so i will enter a new password for that specific email now click on save so as you can see password has been changed and now i can sign in with my new password 
so our forget password screen is also working brilliantly and we can successfully change the password if we forgotten the password for any email here now let's move to the home page of the app and in the home page you can see at the top where it is written hello shivam which is a username with a delicious food and discover and get the great food here and just below of it you can see the different categories like ice cream pizza salad burger now so it shows the food horizontally then vertically so here you can see it shows the food name then a uh, some hint about that food and the price of that specific food item whose image has been shown here now when i click to the ice cream image then it will shows me all the things related to the ice cream now same for the pizza salad and burger so you can see that i can select any of the category in our app and can get the food items related to that specific category now here comes our wallet page so user can add the money to their wallet by using the stripe payment gateway so for an instance i can add any money like 100 dollar 500 dollar etc and here you can see the customize button add money from where i can add the random money according to my choice so when i click to the 500 dollar container here then stripe payment gateway tells us to fill the card number details here so though it is a test mode so i will use a random card number which is 4242 and we need to type 12 digit here so here it suggest a visa card you can use a visa master card or any card according to your choice and same for the month cvc code and zip code now when i click to the pay here then as you can see stripe payment gateway running some authentication method here now click on close so as you can see payment has been successful and 500 dollars has been directly added to our wallet so i will also teach you how to add the payment gateway in our flutter app by using a stripe payment gateway and you can easily add the money to your flutter app and can purchase the food items from the food cart easily let's move to the profile page and in the profile page first you can see the username the user email and the terms condition delete account page and logout page so when i'll click to the user image here then it suggests us to pick the image from our phone gallery so i will just pick the random image from our phone gallery so that i can directly add to my profile page so as you can see that by picking the random image i can directly add the image to my profile and here you can see all the details related to the user and the logout button from where the user can easily log out and can directly move to the sign up page when i'll move to the burgers category then here you can see the burger image with the some details about the burger delivery time and the total price now when i'll increase the quantity to 2 then you can see that total price change 100 according to the price of that specific burger now when i'll change it to 3 it is keep on changing the total price in just few seconds so you can see that by just increasing the quantity it increases the total price of that specific burger according to the price that we have already mentioned for that one burger now here i am choosing a seven quantity for that specific burger and a total price which is 350 dollars now when i click to the food cart button then as you can see food has been directly added to the cart now let's move and check the cart So here you can see the food item with a quantity seven that I have just shown you now and the total price and the burger. So you can see that our food cart page is also working brilliantly and users can add as much food items to their food cart easily. Now here you can see the total price 
of that food items that have been added to our food cart so it is 350 dollars now when i click to the checkout button then you can see that 350 dollars has been directly deducted from our wallet and the order has been placed successfully though it was 500 dollars before so it directly shows 150 dollar after deducting 350 from here now let's move to the admin panel as i have also told you in this video i will also teach you how to make the admin panel to manage the complete app here now here you can see the admin login page though we have created admin login page because i want that it should be in more secure form so that any user can't get inside the admin panel and can do the changes according to his choice so here we will provide a secure username and password to the admin so that they can enter here and can directly move inside the admin panel so in the username i will use a peter and the password 123456 now we'll click in the login button these are the specific username and password that i've just made for the admin if you write anything rather than this then you might not go to the admin panel and can add the food according to your choice now let's move to the add food item screen and here we need to upload the item picture item name so from the add item page you can add the food items according to your choice for that specific category that i have just shown you now in the home page i am writing food recipe contains lots of ingredients and here you can see the four categories ice cream burger salad pizza so i will select a burger category here now when i click to the add button then you can see that food item has been added successfully to our app now let's move to the home page again and let me show where i have added these food items so we have added the food item in the burger category so let's move to the burger category here and when i will scroll then you can see this food item that i have just added from the admin panel so everything is working brilliantly and we have successfully shown a complete food delivery app from scratch but as i have told you before Please do not skip any of the process from this video because you might not get the end result that I have just shown you now. You can follow along with me and start coding with me because you will learn lot of things related to Flutter on this video. I wanted to share something interesting with you. I have noticed that while 90% of you are enjoying our content but you haven't hit that subscribe button yet. Let's change that together by subscribing. You will be joining the majority, becoming a part of our channel. Don't miss out on the awesome videos we have planned. Hitting that subscribe button will keep you in the loop. Thanks to all our current subscribers, you rock. And to the rest, come on board and let's make that 90% shrink. Hit the subscribe button and let's dive into more exciting content ahead. Now. Let's move to the code and start developing the food delivery app from the scratch. Let's move and develop the food ordering app from scratch. So I will move and create a folder name pages here. Now inside the pages folder, I will create a new file name home.dart and inside the home.dart, I will create a stateful widget name home here. Now I will write a scaffold widget body container child column children. Now I will write the text widget. Now inside the text widget I will write hello and will pass the username. So I am writing Shivam here. Now I will give some styling to the text widget here so i will write style text style and i will give a color colors dot black font size 20 and font weight dot bold
now i will move to the main dot dart file and i will call the home page so that i can show you what all things i am writing in home dot dart file now i will give some margin from the top left and right now it is done now i want to give some styling to the text widget here using the font family so i will go to the google font website and i will write a pop ins here and i will download the font family from here and will unzip the zip file and will create a new folder name fonts here now inside the fonts folder i will paste the pop ins semi bold dot ttf file and i will move to the perspec ml file and will mention the font that we have saved in the fonts folder so inside the family i am writing pop ins now i will write the same font folder name that i have saved in the fonts folder pop ins semi bold dot ttf now i'll move to the home dot dart file again and we'll move to the text widget and i will write font family inside the font family i will write pop ins here so as you can see the style of the text widget has been changed according to the font font we have provided in the font family section so now it should look good so on this type of app we need to use a lot of text widget but we need to give a styling to the each text widget so inside the text style if i will write all the things again and again i mean if i will write colors font size font weight font family again and again then it will cover up to 5 to 6 line to just mention a text widget and like this the code will become very long and it will be very confusing for the developer to write the complete code so i have decided that giving the style to text widget again and again i mean writing the 5 to 6 lines again and again i will handle the styling to the text widget in the single line let me show how i will do that so in the lib i will create a new folder name widgets here now inside the widgets folder i will create a new file name support widget and i will create a class name app widget now inside the app widget class i will write a static and i will use a text style and will return the text style in this function name bold text field style copy the same text style that we have provide to this text widget and we'll paste it here so it is done now i'll move to the home dot dart file again and in the style i will write app widget dot bold text field style and i will hot reload it again and now as you can see by just writing one line of code i am giving my style to the text widget here so as you can see rather than writing the six line of code here i used just a single line code inside the text widget to give my styling to the text here so now when we provide some more styling to the text widget then we can create a more static file inside the 
class name app widget here and we will call that each styling by just using a class name and a function where we have stored a specific style for each text widget. So now I'll wrap up with the row. Now I will write the container and in the child I will pass the icon and in the icon I will write icons dot shopping cart and will provide some decoration to the container here. So I'm writing color colors dot black. I have pasted it outside the row so it is showing me in the column widget so let me paste it inside the row widget now I'll give some padding to the container here so whenever the user will press on this container then they will move to the shopping cart where they can see all the items they have added and they can pay and check out to the app now I will write main axis alignment dot main axis alignment dot space between to give maximum space between the two widget we have wrote inside the row widget. So now I will copy the same text and I will paste it below the row and I will write delicious food. Now I want to move this text to the left side of the screen so I will write cross cross axis alignment dot start and will give some height between the row and the text widget. So it is done. Basically it is a headline. So I need this text in more bigger size. So I will move to the widget dot support again and I will copy the same text style and will paste it here and will change the function name to header text field style and will change the font size to 24. Now I will call the same function in the style. So as you can see. Our font has been changed. What we have passed in headline text field style. Now I'll pass one more text widget below the delicious food text. Now I want it to be in the light black color and size should be small and it should be not in bold. Now I will call the same function name light text field style using the add widget class here. So as you can see What all things we are writing in the function name light text field style it is changing our text accordingly. So I am changing the font size according to my choice. So now it should look good. So as I have shown you on the UI before just below the two text. There is the row where the user can select what food he is looking for like burger, pizza, salad, drinks or etc. So now I will write the row here and I will show you how to add a different section where the user can choose what type of food he is looking for. But before that I need to create a folder name images here where I will get 
all the images for each section here like burger ice cream pizza salad etc so let me make the folder name images here and i will copy all the images here so as you can see we have copy and pasted all the images inside the images folder now i will call the each image in the form of container in the row widget so i will write a row and inside the row i will write container and image i will use image dot asset to call the images from the images folder that we have saved now let's move to the perspec ml file and we need to call the all the images that we have saved in the vs code so it is done now let's move to the home page again image dot asset i will write images and i will write the exact image file name where which image i want to show here now i'll give some height and width to the image and fit box fit dot cover so as you can see our image has been appeared now now let me give some height between the two widgets here now i'll wrap up the container with the material widget and we'll give some elevation to the container here and we'll provide some border radius to the material widget now i'll give some padding to the container here now i'll copy the same material and container widget and we'll paste it inside the row widget because we need to show all the three section that are left and i will use a main axis alignment dot main axis alignment dot space between so that i can provide the maximum space between the widgets that we have passed in the row widget now i will rename the each file name so that we can show the different images in the material widget here now i will do some customization according to my choice and will change the height and width up to how much i want to show here so now it's look good i want that whenever the user will click on the ice cream image then the container background color will become black so that the user will get to know that they have selected the ice cream section here and if we make the container background black then we need to change the image color to white and we will do all the things for the other three section like pizza salad and burger so if the user select on the ice cream then we will show all the food items related to the ice cream in our home page and when he clicks on the pizza then we will show all the things and food related to the pizza so we need to keep on changing the color here so if the user will click on the ice cream then its background color will become black and image of the ice cream will change into the white so the user can get the hint that they have selected the ice cream image here
now if we clicks on pizza then we will make the ice cream image to white and image to black as you can see now so that he can know that he has selected pizza and we will show all the things related to the pizza so i will handle all this case using the boolean character here so i will write a bool ice cream and will make it to false same for pizza salad and burger now i'll move to the row widget again now inside the material widget where i have passed all the images i will wrap up with a gesture detector in on tap method i will make the ice cream boolean to true and all other to false so i am doing this is because when the user will click on the ice cream then i want that all the colors to remain as it is we just need to change the ice cream color to black and we'll use a set state method so that we can highlight in few seconds if the user will click on the any of the images here now inside the decoration box decoration i will make the color to black if ice cream boolean is true if not then will remain white now let me provide some border radius to the container here we will also change the color of the image here so inside the image dot asset folder i will write the color and will write the ice cream boolean here and if ice cream is true then we'll make the image color to white and if not then we'll remain it to black so as you can see when i have selected the ice cream image here then its background color changes to black and the color of the image i mean the ice cream image changes to white so it highlight in more different way which will help the user to know what option they have selected now i will do same thing for all the other images that we have passed here so it is done now let me show you how all the things work now i will hot restart it again so as you can see when i have selected to the pizza then all the images will become as it is how we have shown in the starting
pizza container will become black and the image color will changes to the white so this will work for all the images that we have passed in our row widget so now it's look good now i will write the widget and will give a function name so item here and will return all the things that we have wrote inside the row so i will cut and paste it inside the function name so item here this is because my idea is that just not to make the app from scratch but on this project i will also look at to provide a clean code inside the vs code so that each developer can get what all things we are writing inside the code here so if they want to make any of the customization according to his choice then he can do in just few seconds he just not need to look at the complete code again and again which will be very confusing for the developer to make a simple customization in the app so to provide clean code i am trying to make our code as small as i can so in if i will use a widget here and will write a function name so item here so by just passing the one line like so item function inside the column widget it will show all the row here so for this idea do not forget to hit the like and subscribe my channel for more such videos we have in the store though i also need your support in the form of like and subscribe because this will give us more power to make such more videos and provide you such more series again and again on this channel so now i provide some height now inside the row i want to show the food items in the form of the list view but what i'm thinking is that first i want to show all the items in the horizontal form i mean the user can scroll all the food in the horizontal form and just below it will allow the user to scroll all the food items in the vertical form so let me show you how i will do that so inside the row widget i will write a container and i will write a child column children and will pass the image of the food that we want to show at the top then the name and a small line about that food and then the price of that food do now i am adding all the things from the image dot asset folder but do not need to worry as i have told you before i am also making the admin panel in the app from where the owner of any of the restaurant can add the food items from the admin panel and with image dot network we can get the images from the server and directly show the food items in our app so image dot asset now i will get the image that i store in images folder here and will give some height and width to the image according to my choice there is no need to necessary to copy the exact height and width of the Im images that i provided here you can provide any height and width according to your choice so as you can see i have shown a salad image here now just below it i will pass the name of the food that i have shown in the image so inside the text widget i will write veggie taco has and i will pass the style to the text widget using the app widget class now i want this text to be in the semi bold so i will move to the widget support dot dot again and will create a new function name semi bold text fill style
now i'll copy the same text and we'll paste it below where i will pass a simple line just using a light text field style function and we'll use cross cross axis alignment dot start to move all the text at the left side of the screen now i'll write the text widget where i will pass the price of the food here and i will give a same styling using the app widget class and we'll use a semi bold text field style function now i'll give some height between the text widget now i'll wrap up the container with the material widget here and we'll provide some elevation to the material widget now i'll want to give some padding to the container here now just beside of that i want to show one more food item and this will be in the form of the list view so that the user can scroll and can see all the food items in the horizontal direction so now i'll wrap up the row with a single child scroll view i will copy the same food item that we have stored in material and container widget and will paste inside the row widget so as you can see we are facing some error from, from the right side because and i will give the scroll direction axis dot horizontal here so as you can see after giving the single child scroll view we are facing some space problem here so i will give some margin inside the container and we'll do same for the different container so now it's look more good so as you can see we can also scroll the things that we have stored in the row widget here so as you can see from the right side our food item is being cut because of the margin we have provided in the container but i don't want to show the cut from the right side because it will not look good and the user can't read the full name of the next food item so i'll move to the container and we'll remove the margin from the right side and we'll wrap up any of the container where we want to provide the margin or space from the right side so now it's look good so now let's move to the home page and as you can see we have shown all the food items here 
in the horizontal direction user can scroll the food item and can see all the food items what the user have selected the option from the top like if the user will select pizza from the top then it will show all the food related to the pizza first in horizontal direction then on the vertical direction so our showing the food from the horizontal direction is done now let's move and write the container here so that i can show all the foods now in the vertical direction now i will write the container and will write child and will pass the row the reason for passing the row is because first i want to show the image then with the column widget i want to show the title of that food name that i have shown in the image with a price of that food so i will use image dot asset and get the image from the asset folder and will give some fixed height and width to the image here and will use fit box width dot cover so as you can see the image here now i will give the spacing from the top so i will use a size box height 30.0 now i'll fix the height and width according to my choice so it is done now i'll use a column widget inside the row widget and will pass the food name inside the text widget so i'm writing mediterranean chickpea salad now i'll give some styling to the text widget here so i will use a app widget class here and we'll use a semi bold dot text field style so as you can see so it is not showing me the food name according to the width of screen rather than it is showing me one complete text here with the overflow error here but i want that there are the three word on this text widget but i want that to show only the two text first on the width and the third text should be come at the bottom so that it will not show the overflow error and it will be easy for the user to read the food name so let me show how i will do that but before that i will give some width between the image and the column widget i have wrote here now i will wrap up the text with the container widget and will give the fixed width to the container here so that whenever we pass the text inside the text widget then we'll tell the text widget that we have this much maximum space and you can change the line according to that so after give, giving the space as you can see it is changing the line according to the width we are providing in the container now i'll use a cross cross axis alignment dot start to move the text to the top now i'll copy the same container again and we'll paste it here now i'll write one more text honey good cheese basically this is just a simple detail about the food now i'll give some spacing to between these two text widget now just bottom of it i will pass the price now i'll wrap up the container with a material widget and we'll give the elevation 5.0 and we'll provide some border radius inside the material widget so border radius border radius dot circular 20 here 
now i'll wrap up the material widget with the container again so that i can provide some margin from the right side now i'll give some more padding inside the container widget so i'm writing padding at edge insert dot all file so now it's look good so now i will show you how i will add the app bar in my app though there are many app bars you can use in the flutter but i will use the most unique one which has a unique design and the smooth navigation to the different pages so now let's move to the perp dev and i will write a curve navigation bar here now i'll copy the package from here and paste it inside the perspex ml file now inside the pages folder i will create a new file name bottom name dot dot and i will name the stateful widget name bottom name now i'll create an integer name current type index here and will assign the value 0 and will create a list name pages here and will create one more widget name current page here now i will write a home and i will get the home page here in the app bar now i'll go to the pages folder and will create a new file name wallet.dart here and inside the wallet.dart file i will create a stateful widget name wallet here so as i have told you i will show the order wallet and profile section in the app bar so i need to create a pages for each section here so i will create a order profile dot dart file one by one now i'll pass all this file that i have just created now inside the bottom name dot dart so i will write profile and will pass the profile same for order and wallet so now i'll write a init state here because i want to save all the pages one by one in my variable that i just passed here so i will write a home page where i will pass the home section here and same for the order profile and wallet so as you know the reason for using the init state but i want to tell you that the reason for using a init state is because as soon as the bottom name dot dart file is called init state will get all the pages or section in the variable we have just assigned here and we it will pass that in the app bar so that user can easily navigate through a different pages using the app bar so now we have created a list name pages where i will pass all the section in the order i want to show in the app so if i will write the home page here then the order then wallet then profile then it will show me all the sections in that way so if the user will click on the first icon then it will show the home page if second then order then third then wallet fourth then profile 
so make sure so whenever you passing the different section inside the pages list then make sure how you want to show in the app just write in that way if you write in the random order here then it will show the things in the random order i will write a scaffold and bottom navigation bar and here i will pass the curve navigation bar and in items i will pass all the icons that i want to show here so first one will the icons dot home here so icon icons dot home outlined and i will assign the color colors dot white i need more three icons here so i will use icon icons dot shopping bag or outlined and will same provide the same color same for the wallet and profile now i'll give some height to the curve navigation bar here now i'll make the background color to black now i'll write a animation duration basically animation duration is something like how much time it will take to show the animation when the user will click on any of the icon so in that duration i am providing the milliseconds 500 and in on tap i will pass a int index here and will keep repressing the current tab index here so inside the set state i will assign the index here because if the user will click on the shopping bag icon then i want that to open the order dot dot file here now i'll move to the body and will call the pages that we have stored in the pages list now i will move and save all the things i have wrote for app bar now i'll go to the main dot dot and i will show you how our app bar will look alike and how it will help the user to navigate into the different pages so in the home i will write a bottom nav here and will hot restart it again so as you can see we can't see the icon and the app bar here because we have passed the wrong color in our icon file here so i will make it to the black and will change all the icon color to black i will make the background color to white and will right color colors dot black so it will provide the color to the bottom navigation bar so now we'll hot restart it again so as you can see the icon home here but we can't see the other icon here so i need to make all the things to white once again so now as you can see the app bar here and i can move to the different pages in just few seconds so now if i want to move to the order page so i will click on the order icon and it will take me to the order page directly in just few seconds same for the wallet and profile so our app bar part is done now i will show you when ever the user will click on any of the food then it will take him to the detail page section where at the top it will show the image then the name of that food with the quantity he want to add in the cart and a detail about that food so we will do all these things in details dot dot file so let's move to the pages folder and we'll create a new file name details dot dot now i will create a stateful widget name details here now scaffold body container child column children now inside the children now i want to show the icons icons dot arrow back i was so that 
whenever the user will move to the detail page then they can click on this icon and can go directly to the home page but let's move to the home page again and we'll wrap up the container where we have shown food item with a gesture detector here so that we can move to the detail page so in the on tap method i will use a navigator push method here We'll move to the detail page again so as you can see when i tap to the food item then i directly move to the detail page now i'll provide some margin from the top left and right so as you can see the icon here now we'll wrap up the icon with the gesture detector here and in the on tap method I will write navigator dot pop context so that it will move to the home page. Now, as I have said you before, I want to show the image at the top. So I will first write image dot asset and I will get the image from the asset folder here. want to move the icon to the left side of screen so i'll write cross cross axis alignment dot start now i want to provide some width and height to the image here we can't leave the image just like this because every image have their own dimensions so if we will leave the image just like this then it will be very bad experience for the user because if the image dimension will be very large then it will show the overflow error i will provide some height media query dot of context dot size dot height divided by three now fit box fit dot cover but using fit box fit dot cover you can see our image is got cut from top and the bottom but i will show you now one more function named fit box fit dot fill basically fit box fit dot fill is that which tells the image to fill the space of the width and height we have provided here it will just fill the image with a width and height i have just provided here So as you can see using fit box fit dot fill and changing some height in media query our image covers the complete width and height of the screen and it is now highly responsive and it will be as it is on the multiple device you can test. I have shown you in just two video how to use fit box fit dot cover and fit box fit dot fill. And what is the difference between the two functions when you use in image.asset or image.network or any image function. So if you like my idea of showing all the functions one by one and using that in the app. So do not forget to hit that like button and do subscribe my channel so that you won't miss out any of the videos that we upload on this series. So now let's move forward and I will write a text widget here so that I can show my food name here. Now inside the text widget, I will write the food name. Now inside the style, I will use app widget class and will give the styling to the text widget here. I will provide some height from the top. Now I will provide the some more text widget just below Mediterranean text widget and will make it to bold and just above the text will make it to semi bold so it will look more attractive now inside the row i will write the icon icons dot remove and will provide a color colors dot white will provide some decoration to the container here so i will use a box decoration
so now i want to move this row just beside the text we have wrote above so i will paste it inside the row widget and will wrap up with the column and we'll use main main axis alignment dot space between will provide some border radius to the container here will copy the same container and will paste it here and will change the icon name to add now just between this two icon i will show the text widget where, where we will show the count now i'll write a text one and will provide some styling to the text widget here there is a lot of space between the icon and the text we have wrote between the icon so i will remove a space between from here and i will write a spacer here so it will provide some maximum space between the two widgets and will provide the size box and will give a fixed width space between the icon and the text So now it should look good. So let me explain you what I am going to do now. So when I will click on the plus icon, then we will make the count to one, two, three, four, etc. Now if I press the remove icon, then we'll subtract the digit like six, five, four, three, etc. Now we will pass one more case that if the number between these two icon is already one and if so when the user will press on the remove icon i don't want that it should go 0 minus 1 because it will give the bad experience to the user who are using the app the minimum order he can place for this food item is 1 so if the number is already 1 and if the user will press on the remove icon then we will not execute that function of subtracting the digit so let me show how I will do that. Now I will create an integer a1. And we will pass that integer inside a text widget. And we will wrap up the container with a gesture editor here. And in the on tap function, I will execute all the function that I have just explained you now. So I will write a plus plus a here because plus plus a is something like if the a is equals to 1 then plus plus a will make the a equals to 2 so each time user will press on this add icon then we will we will increase the a 1 by each time and we'll use a set state method so that we can update the a at the quick time and we can see the number between these two icons now we'll do same for the different container so i'm writing gesture vector and in on tap in both i've written plus plus a so i will make it minus minus a here now i will hot restart it again and i will show you how this thing will work so as you can see i will click on the plus icon here and you can see our text widget is changing to 2 3 4 5 6 and when i am clicking on the in remove icon then it will reducing my text widget from 6 5 4 3 etc now it reached to 1 but what i have explained you before if i will click on the remove icon again then it will make to 0 so as you can see here but i don't want to make it to 0 
I just want to keep at 1 and if the user will click on the minus icon in the remove icon then I don't want to execute any function here. So in the on tap method I will tell that so I will write the if method here and I will tell that a should be greater than 1. If it is greater than 1 then we will execute the minus a a function here. So as it reaches to 1 now I am clicking on the remove icon but it is not going to 0, minus 1, minus 2 etc. So this is what I am talking about. So this will give a better experience to the user who is using the app and he can select how much quantity he want to add this food item in the cart. Now just below I want to show the detail about this food so I will use a text widget here and I will copy the lorem ipsum text for just the UI and we'll provide some styling to the text widget here. We'll give the spacing. You can also use a max line inside the text widget to show how much line you want to show detail about that food. Now I will write a row. Inside the row, I will write a text name delivery time. I will also show the delivery time here because I want to tell the user how much time it will take him to get this food delivered at the location he have provided here. Now I'll use the icon, icons.alarm. I will provide some color and just beside of it, I will tell how much time it will take the restaurant to deliver the food at the user's location. So now it's look good. Now I will write a row children and column and will provide the text widget total price here because I want to show how much total price the user have to pay whenever he adding this food item in the cart because when we will increase the quantity from here then we'll keep on changing the total price again and again. So it will indicate that up to how much quantity the user have to pay the total price for this food item. And just beside of it, I will make the icon name add to cart so that user can press this button and can directly add this food into the cart. So let me execute all this thing that I have just explained you here. So now let's move to the login and sign up page and we will make the UI first and then we will connect it with the Firebase. Let's move to the pages folder and I will create a new file name login.dart here and I will 
create a stateful widget name login here now i will write scaffold body container child column children so let's move to the main dot dart file and i will call the login page so that i can see you what all things i am writing in the login dot dart file as i have shown you in the ui there is a container and just below that container there is some cup container in the stack so i will first make the container here and will provide the width media query dot of context dot size dot width divide by 2 and in the decoration i will write box decoration and i'll pass the linear gradient color here sorry i have wrote a width there i will replace it with the height and i will write with media query dot of context dot size dot width the reason for using the linear gradient in the box decoration is because basically whenever you want to provide a two color or the mixtures of two or more color in the container then you need to use a linear gradient here and you can assign from where you want to mix or start this two color there is a two function name begin and end here so let me show you how i will do that so first i will pass one customize color code here and i will pass one more color so i will write color and i will pass the customize color code here and i want to begin it from the top left so i will write begin and i will write alignment dot top left so alignment dot top left will allow to start the first color that we have passed in the colors list here so it will start with the color that we have passed first in the colors list and end with the color that we have wrote in the colors list at the last i mean the second color i have wrote inside the colors list so inside the end i will write alignment dot bottom right here so as you can see it creates the mixture of the two colors here basically there is a light color which is starting from the top left position and it is going darker with a with the color that we have passed on the second so as you can see from the top left it is starting with the color that we have passed in the colors list at the top i mean the light color that i have passed in the colors list which will be the first color and the from the bottom right it will end with the color that i have passed in the second position in the colors list so it create the mixture of these two color in the container so whenever you need to combine two or more color always use a linear gradient here and you can give the command from where you want to start and where you want to end i have just used a top left and bottom right here you can use alignment dot top top right or anything you want now as i have shown you in the ui there is a curve container over this container so i will use a stack here so i will remove the column from here and will name it to stack and i will write a container child and i will pass a text that will be a space because i want to just show a container here so i will write a decoration box decoration color colors dot white and i will provide the width media query dot of context dot size dot width so that it will cover the complete width of the screen so as you can see the container at the top now i need to 
provides a border radius so i write border border radius dot only from the top left position i want to give some border radius so i will use a, a top left radius dot circular 20 and from top right radius dot circular 20 now i'll give some height so i'll write media query dot of context dot size dot height divide by 2 so it covers the complete height of the screen but i will provide some margin from the top so i will write margin edge inset dot only top media query dot of context dot size dot height divide by 3 now you might be thinking that why i am using a media query again and again to provide height width or spacing from the top basically media query makes your app makes your app highly responsive if you will give a fixed height and width inside the login and sign up page then when you will test on the multiple device or in the flutter web then you will definitely face the overflow error to escape the overflow error you might use a media query here so that it makes your app highly responsive and it will give a better user experience whenever the user is testing the app in the multiple device so inside the container i will write a column here and in using the image.asset i will pass the logo of our app so i will use image.asset image logo.png and i will use again a media query to provide a width to the image and fit boxfit.cover Now I'll wrap up with the center to move the image to the center and we'll wrap up with the container again so that I can provide the margin from the top. So I will write top 50.0. So now it's look good. Now just so just below of the logo there will be the container where the user can enter the email and password and can log in in the app so i will pass a container here and inside the child i will write a column children and i will the pass text inside the text i will write a login here and i will give some style using a app widget class Now let me provide some decoration to the container here. So I will write decoration, box decoration, color, colors dot white. We'll provide some width. So I will write width, media query dot of context dot size dot width. Though we doesn't want to provide the complete width to the container here so i'll provide some margin from left and right so now it's look good let me give some spacing between the two widgets here now i'll wrap up the container with the material widget here and we'll provide some elevation to the material widget here so i will write five point zero now i'll provide some border radius so i will write border radius border radius dot circular 10 and will provide the same border radius to the material widget Now I'll give some 
spacing from the top so i will use a size box and i will change the app widget to headline text field style so now it's look good now i'll pass a text field here so that user can enter the email and password here so i will write a text field now inside the text field let me provide some padding from the left right and inside the text field i will write decoration input decoration and i will pass a hint text here so i will write hint text email here now i'll provide some style to the hint text here so i'll use a hint hint style and we'll use app widget class to provide some styling to the hint text here now i want to give the icon of the email here so i will use suffix icon icons dot email sorry prefix icon and we'll use email dot outline here we'll do same for the password and we'll rename the hint text with password here and we'll change the icon to so it is done now i will pass a forget password text here so that whenever the user forget the password then they will click on this text and can move to the forget password screen so i will write a text name forget password here and will give the styling using the app widget class i need to move this text to the right side of the screen so i will wrap up the text with a container here and will use a alignment to move to the right side of the screen so i will use alignment alignment dot top right here So as you can see after giving the alignment the text widget move directly to the right side of the screen now i will create a login button here so that user can press on this button and can directly authenticate in the app so i will create a customized button here so i will write a container and i will give a text name login here and will give the styling to the text widget here so i will use a text style color colors dot white font 18.0 and font family poppins 1 and we'll give some decoration to the container here so i'll pass a customized color code here so i will write color and we'll pass the color code one more thing i want to tell you that whenever the you are passing the color code in, inside the color function here then make sure you start with 0 x f f if you won't start with 0 x f f and you directly paste the color code inside the color function then it will show the error and it will not read the color to read the color inside the color function always write the code 0x ff then paste the color code after that so it can read the color and it will give the specific color you are looking for so this was just a small hint from my side so if you like my way of explanation and how i tell the things in more detail and provide you the small hints to make your work easier do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe our channel for more amazing content we have in the store. Now I'll wrap up the text with a center widget so we can move the text.
to the center of the container and will provide some height using the size box here. Now I'll give some padding from the vertical direction. So I will write edge insert dot symmetric vertical 10.0 and will provide some border radius. So I will write border radius dot circular 20 and will wrap up the container with the material widget again and we'll do same procedure what we have done for the container we have just wrote above so whenever the user will type the text inside the password text field then you can see that whatever text he is writing inside the password text field it is coming in the form of the word which is not in the secure form to make it in more secure form i want that the text should be present inside the password text field must be in the dotted form so i'll move to the password text field and will make the off secure text to true so after making it to true whenever type the text inside the password text field you can see the text inside the password text field in the dotted form now i will write a text field where i will write don't have an account sign up and we'll provide some styling to the text widget here so whenever the user will click on this text then they will move to the sign up page where they can create a account and can directly sign up into the app So now it's look good. So our login page is done. Now we will move to the pages folder and we'll create a new file name signup.dart and I will name our stateful widget name signup here. So in the signup page, there will be the same design just like we have created in the login page but we need to add one more text field in the container here which will be the name of the user and we will remove the forgot password section from the sign up page and we will rename some text login to sign up and we'll change the button name too so i will don't write this code again and again i will just copy the code from the login page and we'll paste it here and we'll do the customization according to what I have told you now. As I've told you, I will rename the text so I will write a sign up here. So let's move to the main.dart file and I will call a sign up page and I will show you what all changes I am doing in the sign up page. As I have told you before, I need to create one more text field here. So I will copy the text field from above and will paste it here and will rename the hint text to name here and change the icon to so as you can see the overflow error here because we need to increase the height of the text here so i will go to the height and will change the height here so now it's look good and we'll rename the button to sign up here and we'll change the text to already have an account login and we'll wrap up the text with a gesture detector here and in the on tap method, we'll use a navigator push method to move the user to directly to the login page.
and we'll copy the same method and we'll paste it in the login page where we have wrote the text don't have, have an account sign up so we'll wrap up with a just a director and we'll paste the same code and we'll move the user to the sign up page So our login and sign up page is done and we can easily navigate to the different screen by just clicking on the text here. So now I will show you how to create the onboard method here that I have just shown you in the UI. So in the pages folder, I will create a new file name onboard.dart here and we'll create a stateful widget name onboard here. And we'll create a int current index and we'll assign the integer 0 and we'll create a late page controller and inside the init state I will write controller equals to page controller and initial page i will pass zero basically the page controller i am writing here is because i want to handle the page that i will assign in the onboard so i want to move the user from first page to the second page to the third page that can be done by using a page controller here in void dispose controller dot dispose if you want to dispose any of the function, I mean, if you want to end any of the function, then you can call a function inside the void dispose. Now column children and we'll use a page view dot builder to show all the pages in the onboard function. So item builder. In return, I will use a padding edge inset dot all 20 and will write a child Now inside the page view dot builder, I will write controller and will pass the controller so that we can control all the pages that we will pass in page view dot builder. Now inside the item count, I will pass the length of the content that we upload in the onboard function. But before that, we need to go to the widget folder and we'll create a new file name content model dot dot and inside this dart file i will create a class name onboarding content and we'll create a string image and we'll create a, another string title and description so as i have shown you in the ui in the onboarding screen you can see that there will be the image at the top and just below of it there will be a small title in just one or two lines and there will be a description about the image Now I will write onboarding content function here and will get the description image and title on this function.
now i will create a list name contents here and will pass the class name onboarding content here and will pass all the pages description image and title one by one that we want to show in the onboarding screen so in the description i will for the first onboarding screen so in the description i will write pick your food from our menu more than 35 times and will pass the image that we have saved in the images folder so i will write image screen one dot png and will pass the title to now in the title i will write select from our best menu and will give the spacing according to the our choice i have used a slash and between the text is because slash and method usually changes the line whenever you use between the sentence here so for an example select from our will be the first sentence and using a slash and it will change the line and it will show the space that we have passed here then it will write a best menu so you can use a slash and method whenever you want to change the line in the sentence and we will do same for the other two screens so in the description i will write you can pay cash on delivery and card payment is available and we'll use again slash and method to change the line and we'll give the spacing according to our choice and we'll get the image that we have saved in the images folder and we'll write same for the title and we'll write easy and online payment and we'll create same for the third screen so in the description i will write deliver your food at your doorsteps and we'll use same slash and method and we'll get the image from the images folder and we'll write the title so in the title i will write quick delivery at your doorstep now let's move to the onboard dot dart file again and we will call all the things that we have saved in the contents list so i will write in item count contents dot length now in on page changed we will keep on updating the current index using a set state method and inside the column i will pass the image dot asset here and will get the image from the asset folder so we'll write contents dot i image and we'll pass the height and width to the image basically contents i dot image will get the image from the list so like it first it will show me the first screen so it will get me the first image that i have saved in the contents list then the second and then the third and we'll use a fit box fit dot fill here 
so it covers the complete height and width of the screen. Now I will write a size box height 40.0 and will pass the title here. So now inside the column I will pass our text widget where we will show the title of our onboarding screen. So I will write text contents i dot title and will pass the style using the app widget class here. Now I will use our size box to give the height between the two text widget here and just below of it I will pass the description here. So I will use our same content i dot description and will give the styling using the app widget class here. So as I have shown you in the UI in the onboarding screen at the top there is the image then the title then the short description and just below of the description there is a dot like structure that will be keep changing whenever the user will move to the next screen to show the dot like structure i will create a container here and will write child row and will be main main axis alignment dot center children and inside the children i will create a list dot generate now inside the length i will pass the content length here because i want to show only that much dot how much our onboard screen is though i am adding the three onboarding screens here so i will show a three dot like structure here which will be keep on changing from one after to the another so if you want to show more onboarding screens like four to five and if you pass a content dot length here then it will show the dot like structure according to the onboarding screens you have added now inside the index i will call a function name build dot index here so let go and create a widget name build dot where we will create a dot like structure using the container now i will create the container and we will name build dot here that we have just wrote above and we'll pass the in index here basically int index will keep on changing whenever the user will move to the next screen and it will suggest the dot indicator to move to the next dot whenever the user will move to the next onboarding screen so in the container i will specify the height of the dot so i will give the height 10.0 and will so in with current index is equal equals to index this means that if the user present on on the specific screen and we will change the width whenever the user will move from one onboard screen to the another now margin edge insert dot only write 5 and we'll provide a box decoration border radius dot circular 6 and we'll provide the color so it is done now just below of the dot indicator we will pass a customize button here so as i have shown you in the ui there will be a button which will help the user to go from one onboarding screen to the another so if he click on the next button then it will take him to directly to the next onboarding screen and 
if he clicks on the start button then it will take him to the sign up page where the user can sign up into the app and can directly move to the home page of the app so i will create a customize button using a container here and will pass the text next here and will give the styling to the text widget using the app widget class here and will wrap up the container with a gesture editor here and in the on tap method i will write in if condition if current index is equals equals to contents dot length minus 1 then i will move to the user directly to the sign up page because if the user moves directly to the last page of the onboarding screen then he will click on the start button and it will take him directly to the sign up page the reason for writing contents dot length minus 1 is because it provides the length of the onboarding screen from 1 to 3 but the current index start from 0 1 2 so if it move to the last page then current index will be 2 and contents length will be 3 so it will not match and it will not take us to the sign up page so to make it 2 i need to write minus 1 here so it will become 2 is equals equals to 2 then it will take me to the sign up page hope it clears your point why i have wrote this condition inside the if statement now we'll use a controller dot next page to move to the next page and we'll pass a duration of moving to the next page will be 100 milliseconds and in the curve i will write curves dot bounce in there are many curves animation you can use according to your choice so inside the container i will write a decoration a box decoration and will provide some color and border radius to the customized button here i will remove a app widget class that we have used for the styling because we need to provide the text in the white color so i will use a style text style and will provide a color colors dot white now let's move to the main dot dart file again and i will call the onboarding screen we are facing some minor error here because it is showing that a render box error because it co can't covers the complete height of the screen so i will go to the onboard dot dart again and will wrap up the page view dot builder with the expanded widget which will indicate him to covers the complete height and width of the screen according to his choice so now we'll hot reload it again now as you can see the our onboarding screen with the image at the top then the title description and the button but i need to do lot of customization here to make it more attractive so i will change the height of the image according to the my choice and will do the customization of the image so let me do the customization according to i have shown you in the ui at the starting of the video will make our button more attractive here so i will use a border radius with dot center widget etc
now i'll provide some space between the title description so that it will look more clear whenever user is reading the title and description in our onboarding screen though i am fixing the space according to my choice if you have any specific idea of providing the space or if you want to write anything in inside the title or description you can write in your way so our onboarding screen is done now you can see the first page of our onboarding screen where the image is at the top with the title select from our best menu pick your food from our menu more than 35 times and when i click on the next button i will it will take us to the second page which will indicate us that easy and online payment you can pay cash on delivery and card payment is available now click on next again and it will take me to the last screen of the app which will tell that quick delivery at your doorstep deliver your food at your doorstep now at the last screen i want to replace the next text with a start text so that user can click on this text and directly move to the sign up page so i will go to the onboard screen again and will move to the text widget and will pass the same condition that if it move to the last screen then we will show the start text here and will hot restart it again and we click on next next and as you can see the start text here and when i'll click on this button it will take me directly to the sign up page where the user can sign up into the app and directly move to the home page Let's move to the Firebase and we'll create a project inside the Firebase. We need to give a project name so I'm writing food delivery app here. And we click on continue. We'll select default account for Firebase and we'll click on create project button and as you can see the Firebase is creating our project so wait for a few seconds. so as you can see firebase has created our project successfully now we'll click on the continue button and we'll move directly inside the project now here you can connect the apple android and web app through the firebase so first we will connect the apple app here then we will move to the android app so i will tell you each thing step by step to how to connect the apple and android app through the firebase so let's move and first add the ios app here then we'll move to the android so here we'll need the apple bundle id so we'll move to the ios folder and we'll open the x code from here now we'll move to the runner and we'll go to the signing and capabilities and we'll copy the bundle identifier from here and we'll paste it inside the apple bundle id now we'll click on register app wait for a few seconds now download the google service dash info dot p list file and we need to paste it inside the x code one thing make sure that it should be google service dash info dot plist file if anything is written rather than this then make sure you edit them now we'll paste it below the info and we'll click on finish it is done now we'll click on next again on next now continue to the console 
so as you can see we have successfully added the ios app here now we'll move to the android app now we need the android package name here so we'll go to the android app build.gradle file and we'll copy the application id from here and we'll paste it inside the android package name now we'll click on the register app again and we'll wait for a few seconds now we will download the google service dot json file and we'll paste it inside the android app folder also make sure that it should be google dash service dot json file so now it is done now click on next now copy the id from here and we'll paste it inside the android build dot gradle file so in class path we'll paste this id and we'll change some lines of the code here and we'll remove the unwanted things that we don't want inside the class path so it is done now now let's move and we'll copy the id and we'll paste it inside the android app build.gradle file and we'll paste it in apply plugin and we'll again change the sum line of the code now we'll copy the dependencies from here and we'll paste it inside the same file now we'll click on next now continue to the console so as you can see we have successfully added the ios app and android app here through firebase now let's move to the authentication section and we need to enable the email and password authentication using firebase so we'll go to the email and password section and we'll click on the enable button and we'll click on the save so as you can see email and password has been enabled now now we'll move to the firestore database and we'll also want that when the user will log in or sign up into the app then their data will be directly uploaded to the firestore database from where the user can get all the data according to the id he is using to log in or sign up into the app so here you can use any of the default location according to your choice now click on the enable button so as you can see the firebase is creating some security rules here so wait for a few seconds now we'll go to the rules and we'll change the false to true i am repeating it again and again please do not miss this step to change the rule from the cloud firestore and remove the false and make it to true because if you don't do that then the user can't upload the data to firestore database i would also recommend you to do not skip any of the because if you will skip any of this step or any of the thing from the video then you will not get the end result what we will do throughout the app so follow each and every step and write the code along with me with the full explanation i am giving you here now let's move to the pub dev and we'll copy the some packages from here and we'll paste it inside the pubspec ml file so here comes our first package name which is a firebase core so we'll copy this dependency from here and we'll paste it inside the pubspec ml file and our second package name is firebase auth basically firebase auth help us to authenticate in the app using the firebase so we'll do same what we have done for firebase core now here comes our third package name which is cloud firestore so cloud firestore help us to upload the data to firestore database that i have just shown you now so we'll copy the same dependency and we'll paste it inside the pubspec ml file now we'll run the packages that i have just pasted it here
Now let's move to the main.dart file and we'll write some of the lines of code to enable the Firebase in our app. So inside the void main function, I will write widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialized now await firebase dot initialize app now let's move to the sign up dot dart file again and we'll write a few function in the sign up dot dart file to enable the email authentication in our app so in the sign up page as you can see there are the three text field name name email and password so we need to create a three strings here which will be a name email and password where we can store all the things that we will write in this text field now text editing controller name controller equals to new text editing controller basically text editing controller help us to manage the things we write on this text field now we'll do same for the email and password one more thing i want to recommend you is that don't copy the code directly from the source code and paste it inside the this dart file and run the app this will not help you to learn anything that we will just write here i will recommend you to follow along with me and just write the code with me with the full explanation i am giving here so that you can understand the each lines of code i am just writing in this dart file because this will help you to customize your app in your way and if you want to do any of the changes according to your choice then you can do it very easily but if you will just copy the code and will paste it here then you can't customize the app according to your choice and you will find very difficult to change any of the lines from this source file now i will create a function name registration here basically registration function will be called whenever the user will sign up into the app so like when the user will fill all the details on this text field and will click on the sign up button then the registration function will be called which will tell the user to directly move inside the app and start ordering the food according to his choice now inside the registration function i will write some lines of code here and i will explain you after writing the complete registration function here So as you can see here in the registration function I have wrote if password is not equals to null then we will move the user to the function name create user with email and password and we will pass the email and password here and if the email and password are right according to the validator we have passed then the app will move the user directly to the home page of the app now if the password is weak and it matches with e.code function then it will show password provided is too weak 
and if the email is already in use then it will show that account already exist now i'll create a final form key global key form state the reason for using the global key is because in each text field i want to check that if the user have entered all the things correctly inside the text field or not so by using the global key i can check all the cases inside the each text field now i'll move to the column and we'll wrap up the column with a form widget here and we'll pass the key form key that we have just mentioned above in the form of the global key now we'll rename the text field to text text form field and when controller will pass the name controller and in validator i will pass the value if the value is null or empty then will tell the user to enter the name here and if everything is okay then we will show the null because i don't want to show anything if the validator is true now we'll copy the same thing and we'll do same for the email and password so it is done now let's move to the sign up button here and we'll wrap up the sign up button with the gesture detector widget here in in on tab i will pass that if form key dot current state dot validate so let me explain you why i have wrote the form key dot current state dot validate here the reason for writing the form key dot current state dot validate is because as you know in each text field we have wrote the validator here so using the if case first it will check that if all the validator is true or not so if the all the validator is true then it will move to the set state and will reassign the all the string with the text we have passed in the each text field then it will move to the registration function and allow the user to directly sign up into the app now we'll move to the registration function again and we'll write navigator dot push material page root to push the user to directly to the home page of the app once the user sign up into the app now i am writing the push replacement here rather than push is because if you write just push here and make the user to directly move to the home page of the app then he can move to the sign up page again using the back button but if you write the push replacement here then he can't move to the sign up page again so our sign up page is done and we have wrote all the function related to the sign up page here now let's move and run the app here so i'm writing the flutter clean in the terminal section now flutter pub get to get all the packages
Now Flutter run to run the app in the iOS emulator. Now wait for a few seconds as you can see that our app is launching in the emulator that we have just assigned here. Our build is done and we have successfully launched our app. Now here is the onboarding screen and we click on next again on next and click on the start button and we'll move directly to the sign up page. Now inside the username, I will write my name here. So I'm writing Shivang Gupta here and in the email section, I will write the random email here and we'll write the password. and we'll click on the sign up button. Uh, so as you can see, we have registered successfully and we have directly moved to the home page of the app. So our sign up function is working properly and our email authentication through the sign up page is done. Now we'll move to the login page, but before moving to the login page, I need a small help from you if you are loving this awesome series, then please do not forget to hit the like button in this video because this help us to create a more videos for you and create a amazing app more in coming future. Now let's move to the login dot dart page again and we'll create a function for our login page here so that user can directly log in into the app. So in the login page, there are the two text field name, email and password. So we'll create a two string name, email and password here. Now we'll write text identity controller, user mail controller new text editing controller and we'll do same for the password now we'll create a function name user login here that will be called whenever the user will click on the login button here. So let me write the few lines of code inside the user login function here and will and I will explain you once I wrote all the code inside the user login function here. So I have wrote all the code inside the user login function here. We have wrote a function name sign in with email and password where we'll pass the user email and password here. And if the user email has been not found, then we'll pass that no user found for that email. And if the password doesn't match with the user email then we'll pass that wrong password provided by user here. Now we'll move to the column and we'll wrap up the column widget with a form widget here and we'll pass the key. So let's move and create the global key here that we have created just for the sign up page.
so inside the key i will pass the form key here and let's move to the text field and we'll rename the text field to text form field and we'll pass the controller here so i am writing user email controller and we'll pass the validator value and we'll check if the value is null or empty if it is null or empty then we'll pass that enter the email in this text field and if it is true then we'll pass the null here so many of you might be confused why we are passing null if validator is true because if the user enter something on this text field then i don't want to show anything in the validator section so if you don't want to show anything inside the validator sec validator section then you need to pass a null here now we'll do same for the password section now we'll move to the login button here and we'll wrap up the widget name just a director here and in the on tap function we'll pass the same current state validator that we have wrote just for the sign up page now we'll also rename the string in the set state what we have entered on this text field now we'll hot restart it again and we we'll click on next again on start button first i will create the account using the sign up page here and we'll use the same account to log in into the app so here i will create a username shivam gupta here and we'll pass the email shivam456 at the rate gmail.com and we'll pass the password and we'll click on the sign up button and we'll wait for a few seconds so as you can see we have registered successfully now i will use the same account to log in into the app so in the email section i will write the shivam456 at the rate gmail.com and in the password i will use the same password that i have used to create this id now we'll click on the login button and as you can see we have successfully log in into the app and directly move to the home page of the app so our sign up and login page is done and it is working brilliantly how we are expecting now you have learned how to use the email authentication in the app and how to log in and sign up in the app so if you have learned something from this video then do not forget to hit that like button so if you are loving this authentication part then on this channel i have uploaded more videos of firebase authentication using flutter you will find a phone authentication apple authentication google authentication and many more authentication in my channel you can follow along the playlist of flutter firebase authentication you will find it in the playlist section or i will paste the link in the comment box so that you can directly move to the authentication playlist and can learn more about flutter firebase authentication now here come our third section which is name as forgot password so for an example if the user forgot the e password for the email they want to log in then they will click on the forgot password text and can directly move to the forgot password screen so in the pages folder i will create a new file name forgot password dot dot here and will create a stateful widget name forgot password now i will write scaffold container 
child column first i will create the ui of our forgot password screen then we'll create a function so that user can change the password using the link that will be sent to his email that he will write in the text field so i will write the container here and will align the using alignment dot top center here and will write the ch child text and will pass the text name password recovery which will be the headline of our this page and will give some styling to the text widget here now i'll give some spacing between the two text here so i will use a size box here and will write one more text widget here where i will write enter your mail this will indicate the user to enter the mail to this text field of whom he have forgot the password and will give the styling to the text widget here now i will write a widget name expanded here and in the child i will write a form widget which will help us to validate what we have done on this on the last two page name sign up and login and will provide the padding using the padding widget here and will use a list view to assign all the things in the vertical direction now i will write a container here from where the user can enter the email and can change the password now inside the child i will write a text form field and in the controller i will pass the text editing controller so i will write text editing controller mail controller equals to new text editing controller and will pass the same mail controller to the text form field now we will pass the same validator that we have done on the past now we'll give some styling to the text that we'll pass inside the text field here and we'll use our decoration input decoration to provide some decoration to the text form field here now inside the input decoration i will pass the hint text here and the hint style to provide the styling to the hint text that we have just stored inside the hint text function and we'll give the prefix icon icons dot person here and we'll provide some color to the icon here now i will write size box height 40.0 because i will create a customized button name send email here through using a container widget so i will write container and will give some margin here so i will write edge insert dot only left 10.0 and will write child row main main axis alignment dot center and in children i will write and will give some fix width to the container here and i will provide the width 140 and will give the padding to the container here so i will use edge insert dot all 10 now decoration box decoration and we'll give some decoration 
to the container here so i will write color colors dot black and will provide border radius so border radius dot circular 10 and we'll write child again and we'll use a center widget then a text widget to center the text inside the container and we'll write the text send email and we'll give the styling to the text widget here and we'll give some font size font weight though I'm giving the fixed font size and font weight and color according to my choice but if you have any better idea or any better color or if you want to give any other design to the container you can go in your way if you do the customization according to your choice then it will give the better experience to you to understand the each line of code that i am writing here so now let's move and wrap up the forget password text in the login page with a gesture detector and directly move to the user directly to the forgot password dot dot file or forgot password screen now i will show you what all things i have just wrote in the forgot password dot dot file by using a navigator dot push method here So it is done. Now we'll hot reload it again and we'll click on the forgot password text and we'll move to the forgot password screen. So as you can see, we can't see any text right now here because all the text are in the white color. So we need to go to the forgot password dot dart file again and we need to go to the scaffold and we'll give the background color to black. Now we'll hot reload it again. And as you can see, after giving the background color to black, you can see the text field with a hint text name email here and a text just above the text field indicating that to enter the email on this text field. So as we can't see the button here because I have made the background color of the container to black, so I need to change it to white. So after changing it to white, you can see the send email button here. I want to center this button where I have wrote send email text, but I need to remove the row and container from here because I don't need row and container because we don't want to show two widgets in the row. So I will remove the row and container from here and we'll hot reload it again so as you can see our button is covering the complete width of the screen so now it's look good so let me explain you how the send email button will work so if the user have forgot the password for the email they have created the account then they will write the email in this text field and will click on the send email button then the notification will be shown to the user that reset password email has been sent then the user have to check the mail where they will get a link to reset their password again and after resetting the password they can log in with a same email and the new password now we'll write size box and we'll give some height between the two widgets here and inside the row i will write children and will pass the text name don't have an account and will 
give the styling to the text widget here. And inside the row, I will write one more text widget name create. So if the user doesn't have an account, then they will directly click on this text and can directly move to the sign up page and can create a new account and can directly move inside the app. So I am giving the customized color to this text widget here. Now I'll give some font size 20.0 font weight dot w500 and we'll wrap up the text widget with a gesture director and in on tap method we'll use navigator dot push method to directly move to the sign up page. So we need to paste it inside the list view which it that we have just wrote above for the text field and the customized button. Now we'll hot reload it again and we'll move the text to the center of the screen. So I will use a main main axis alignment dot center in the row widget. So now it's look good. Now, as you can see, when I will click on the create button, then it will directly move to the sign up page. And when I will click on the forgot password text in the login section, then we'll move to the forgot password screen again. Now here comes our one of the main function for our forgot password screen. But before that, I need to create a string name email here because there is only one text field and will create a same global key that we have created on the sign up and login page. Now we'll create a function name reset password. This is the one of the main function that will be required in the forgot password screen because it will be called whenever the user will click on the send email button here. So let me write the few lines of code inside the reset password function and I will explain you after writing the complete code inside this function. So let me explain you what all things I have wrote in the reset password function here. So at the top, as you can see, once the reset password function is called, then Firebase auth will call a send password reset email function here, where we'll pass the email that you have just wrote inside the email text field. And after calling this function, it will show the snack bar name password reset email has been sent and if the user has been not found with the password that we have entered on this email text field then it will show that no user found for that email. Now let's move to the form widget again 
and will write key and will pass the form key there and will move to the send email button and will wrap up with a gesture detector and in on tap method will write if form key dot current state dot validate and you will and we will use a set state to rewrite the email string here and we'll use a mail controller dot text and we'll call the reset password function and we'll hot restart it again and i will show you how the forget password screen function will work here so now let's move to the login page and for an example if you have forget this email password that i have just stored inside the email section to log in into the app you will click on the forget password text it will take you to the forget password screen where it will suggest you to enter the email of the password that you have forgot and you will enter the same password here and you will click on the send email button and wait for a few seconds so as you can see password reset email has been sent now let's check to the email if i have got the link to change my password or not so here as you can see i have got the link to change my password for the email i have just stored in the login page so after clicking to the link it will take us to the new tab which will name a reset password and it is telling us to write a new password here so after writing the new password as you can see password has been changed successfully and you can now sign in with your new password so now let's move to the wallet page and we'll create the ui of our wallet page then we will add the stripe payment gateway in the app so that user can directly add the money to the wallet using the app now let's move to the code and we'll write a scaffold here body container child column children and we'll write the text and inside the text widget we'll write wallet here which will be the headline of our wallet page and in the style we'll use a app widget class and we'll use semi bold dot text field style to give the style to our text widget now we'll center the text widget using the center widget here now we'll give the margin from the top so i will use margin edge inset dot only top 50.0 I will change the style to headline text field style. So as you can see by using the just one line of code in the style, you can give the styling to the text widget according to your choice. Now we'll use a material widget here so we'll wrap up the container with a material widget and we'll give the elevation 2.0 and we'll give the padding to the container here so i'll use padding edge inset dot only bottom 10.0 now we'll give some more spacing from the top now it's look good now we'll write the container and inside the container i will pass the row here and we'll use a children and we'll use decoration box decoration and inside the color i will pass the customized color here so i will use a color and we'll write the customized color code 0 xff then we'll pass the code of the color here so if you are watching this series from the starting then you know the reason why i have used a 0x ff to write the customized color code here
Now we want the container to use a complete width of the screen. So we'll use a media query inside the width and we'll use image.asset images and we'll pass the wallet image here that I've saved in the images folder and we'll give some height and width to the image here and we'll use fitboxfit.cover to cover the complete width and height of the image that we have just provided here. So as you can see the wallet image here. Now we'll give the spacing size box height 30.0. Now we'll give the padding to the container. So we'll use edge inset dot symmetric. And I want to provide the padding from vertical and horizontal direction. Now I will use a size box with 40.0 and inside the row I will pass a column widget here and in the children I will pass one text widget where I will write your wallet and will provide the styling to the text widget using the app widget class here. Now in the column I will use a cross cross axis alignment dot start to move the text directly to the top of the screen. Now just below of your wallet I want to show how much money does the user have in their wallet when they want to place the order for the food item. Now I will use a one more text widget and I will show the money in the form of dollar. So I will use a slash dollar sign to show the dollar sign before the integer or the amount. Now I'll give the styling to the text widget here. So as you can see in the wallet section, user can directly see that how much money does he have in the wallet so that user can directly pay for the food item and directly place the order. Now I will write one more text widget in the column widget and I will use a cross cross axis alignment dot start. Now I will write one more text widget here and inside the text widget I will write the add money text and will give the styling to the text widget here and will provide the padding from the left direction and will give the height from the top using the size box. Now inside the row I will write the children and will give the spacing between the two widgets here. Now. The reason for writing the row widget is because now I want to show some container here. It will suggest the user to add some money to his wallet like $100, $200, $500 or $1000. So I will use a container inside the row widget. So when the user will click on any of the container like $100, then it will directly tell the user to add the card and add the hundred dollars to his wallet. So let me show how I will do that. But before adding the function, I will create a UI of the container here. So inside the row, I will write the container. Now I will use a padding edge inset dot all five decoration box decoration and will give the color to the border here. Now we'll give the border. So I will write border border dot all and we'll give the color to the border here. Now again I will use a customized color for the border. Now I will use border radius border dot circular 5 
Now inside the container, I will write the child and will pass the text widget here indicating that how much money does user want to add to his wallet. So I will use again a dollar sign and I will use a hundred digit here and will give the styling to the text widget here using the app widget class. So as you can see the container of hundred dollar. Now I will change the styling because I want to show in the bold form. So it will be much clear to see how much money does the user is adding to his wallet. Now I'll copy the same container and will paste it here and will change the number from 100 to 500, 1000 and 2000. So here you can see the four container. So user can directly add the money by pressing on this container and I will use main main axis dot alignment dot space evenly so that each container get the even space in the row widget. Now let's move and create one customized button name add money here using the container. So for an instance, if the user want to add the money according to his choice like $49, $50 or less than $50, then they can use a add money button where they will click and a alert dialog box will be appear so that in the text field they can enter the amount like $50 and can add directly to his wallet. So there will be a two option to add the money to the wallet one by directly clicking on any of the container and one by clicking on add money button to add how much money the user want to add in his wallet. Now inside the container I will pass the child center and will use a text widget and will inside the text widget I will write the text name add money and will give the styling to the text widget here using the text style color colors dot white font size 14.0 Though I didn't use a app widget class here because here I want to provide the color in the white form but in the app widget all the colors are in the black form. So if you want you can add this styling in the app widget class and you can show the styling in just in one line using the app widget class here. So it is done. Now we'll provide some margin. So I will use edge inset dot symmetric and will pass vertical 20.0 sorry horizontal 20.0. Now we'll provide some border radius to the container here. So now it's look good. So our UI of our wallet part is done. Now let's move and add the function so that user can directly add the money using the Stripe payment gateway. So let's move to the Stripe website and I will suggest you each and every point to how to create the account in the Stripe, how to get the publishable key and secret key in the app so that you can add the Stripe payment gateway in the app and can pay using the Stripe gateway and can directly add the money to your wallet. I will also suggest you to do not skip any of the process from here because if you miss any of the process then you might not get the end result that I have shown you in the starting of the video. So just follow along with me because there are lots of things that we will add on this Stripe payment gateway. So if you are using the Android device or iOS device 
Don't need to worry. I will tell you how to add the Stripe payment gateway in both the device. But there are lots of things that we are going to add in the Android and iOS device. So just follow along with me and I will tell you each and every step how to add the Stripe payment gateway in the Flutter app. So let's move to the Stripe website here and you can see the Stripe website here. Now many tech giants company are using the Stripe payment gateway to process their payment like Amazon, Google, WhatsApp, Shopify, etc. So you can see it is one of the most demanded payment gateway that I am adding in our Flutter app. So now let's move and we'll create the account. So I will click in the signing button here. And so if you have the account, you can sign in to your account. And if you don't have the account, then don't need to worry. Just come down and in the text, sign up, click it. And it will take you to the create your Stripe account page. And you need to fill all the details like email, full name, country, password, and just click on the create account button and it will create the account in just few seconds. Though I have already created the Stripe account here. So I will take you directly to my dashboard of our Stripe account. So here you can see the our home page of our Stripe payment gateway. So at the top, you can see that it is running in the test mode because I am going to add this gateway in our app for now in the test mode. If you want to add in the live mode, just go above and fill all the details and you can go live with a Stripe payment gateway. Now here comes one of the most important thing that I am talking about. You need the API keys to add in our Flutter app to run the Stripe payment in our app. So just click on the developers option from the top and just go to the API key and here you can see the publishable key and secret key. So we need this two key in our Flutter app. So after creating the account, let's move to the Flutter Stripe package, which will be available in the popdef file. Just type Flutter Stripe and you will find the Flutter Stripe package here. Now let's go to the installing and copy the dependency from here and paste it in the perspective file. Now run the package. So click on the readme and just go down and you can see in the requirement section, there is a two text name Android and iOS. So in the Android, it has wrote the complete setup for a Flutter Stripe and in the iOS, it has wrote the complete setup. So let's move and first I will do for the Android, then we'll move to the iOS. So in the Android, here comes our first point name, use Android 5.0 API level 21 and above, which is already done. You don't need to do anything here. Now here comes the second point, use a Kotlin version 1.5.0. We are already using the Kotlin version of above 1.5.0. So just skip this step. Now let's move to the third point, which is using a theme dot app compact. So we need to change this in our Android manifest file. So let's move to the code and we'll go to the Android manifest file, which will be found you in the Android app main folder and just go to the Android manifest file and in Android theme, you need to write Android at the rate style theme dot app compact dot light. So it is done. Now let's move to the fourth step using an up to date Android Gradle built tool version. So just skip this step because it is already done. 
Now let's move to the fifth point, which is using a flutter fragment activity instead of flutter activity in main activity dot kt. So we need to change this in the code. So let's go to the Kotlin and main activity dot kt file. And we need to add one more line here. So I will write import dot io dot flutter embedding dot android dot flutter fragment activity. And we need to change the flutter activity to flutter fragment activity. So it is done. Now make sure you save all the files here. And our sixth point is rebuild the app. Don't update with hot reload. So we don't need to use a hot reload. We need to use a flutter run or hot restart as your wish. So let's move to the iOS and in the iOS, we need to do only one change, which is making our platform iOS 213 or above. Though I've already made the platform iOS 213. So let me show you how you can change that. Go to the iOS and move to the pod file and you will find this line here. Just make it to 13 or above 13 as you want. So I have told you the complete setup for Stripe payment gateway here. Now let's move to the widget folder and we'll create a new file name app constant dot dot and here we'll paste the two key that I have just shown you in the Stripe website. So here I will write a string publishable key and will paste the key here. So let's move to the API key and will copy the publishable key from here and will paste it here. Now we'll do same for the secret key. So we'll use a string secret key. will reveal the text key here and we'll click on continue Now let's move to the mem.dart file again and we'll call the publish key here. So I will write stripe dot publishable key equals to and we'll pass the same publishable key that we have just wrote in app constant dot dart. So it is done. Now let's move to the wallet dot dart file again and we'll write the complete function for our Stripe payment gateway here. So here I will create a function name make payment here, which will be called whenever the user will click on the any button to add the money to his wallet. So in make payment, I will pass the string amount here, which will be the amount of the money I want to add in the wallet. So I will write map string dynamic and will write payment
intent here so let me write the complete code for our stripe payment gateway inside the make payment function then i will explain you what all things i have wrote inside the make payment function here So I have wrote the complete code inside the make payment function here. So let me explain you what all things I have wrote inside the make payment function here. Here I have created the payment intent where I have passed a create payment intent function here. And here I am passing the amount in the form of INR which is a Indian rupee. So if you want to pass in any of the currency code then you can write in your way so for an example if you want to pass in the dollars so you can write usd here so i have passed the merchant random display name here you can write anything after payment is successful we'll use a show dialog box to show that the user that payment has been successful and amount has been added to his wallet and we'll use a icon dot check circle to show the amount has been added to his wallet for a reason if our payment is cancelled or not done then we'll show the error which will be directly shown to the terminal and it will tell us why the payment is not successful and if the payment is cancelled then it will show the user that payment has been cancelled and it has and the amount has not been added to his wallet now in create payment intent i pass the map here with indicating that amount and we use a calculate amount function here the reason for using the calculate amount function is because in the stripe you need to multiply any of the amount you are passing in the string form with 100 if you don't do that then it will show all the amount in the decimal form so make sure whenever you are passing the amount in the string form you need to multiply it with a 100 using the in dot parse function then we'll return the calculate amount to string that will be 
directly passed to the map string dynamic here and in the currency it will show same currency and we have used a http package that i have just shown you i have copied that from the puff dev and we have pasted in the pspcml file and in the authorization we have passed the secret key so it is done now let's move to the terminal and we'll use a flutter clean command here then flutter pub get to get all the packages then we'll use a flutter run to run the app in our emulator so just wait for a few seconds so as you can see our app has launched successfully now let's move to the wallet section here and here when i will click to the 100 dollar container here you can see the our payment gateway is working brilliantly and it has shown us a box where it is showing that we can add our payment information to add the hundred dollar in our wallet if you want to add the money in the test mode using the visa card then make sure you need to add the same card number that i am showing you here because it is a stripe test mode to test the visa card here so in the card number i will write 4242 which will be a 12 digit here and in the month i will write a random date here and i will write a random cvc code and zip code you can change the country according to your choice but i will keep it us here and i will write a random zip code and will click on processing and it will redirect to a page where it will run all the verification and after the verification will click on the close button and you can see our payment has successfully been achieved and it has shown the dialog box payment successful here our stripe payment gateway is working brilliantly and we have added all the things according to what we have required for adding the stripe in the flutter app so if you learn today how to add the payment gateway in the flutter app do not forget to hit the like button so that we can get more support to create more videos and will create awesome flutter apps more in coming future so do not forget to hit that like and subscribe to our channel for more such videos in the coming future because if you hit that like button then it will give us support to create more videos like this now let's move and do all the things for the other container like five hundred dollar thousand dollar and two thousand dollar so i will wrap up the container with a gesture director and will call the make payment function here and will pass the amount 500 and will do same for the 1000 and 2000 now we'll hot reload it again and when i will click on 2000 it will show again the dialog box to add the payment information here so i will use the same card number and will fill all the same detail that i just told you before and will click on pay and it redirect us for some verification and we'll click on the close text here so as you can see our payment has been successful but as you can see after adding the money to our wallet it is not updating here so that 
user can see how much money has been added to his wallet. So we need to update the wallet whenever the user will add the money directly from here. So let's move to the signup.dart file again and here I will upload the user detail to Firestore database that I have shown you in the last video. So in the map, I will use a string dynamic here and will name the map add user info. String dynamic is because first in the map where we will pass the string which will be the name and in the dynamic we can pass name, integer, string, boolean or anything. So I refer you to use a map string dynamic here and first we'll pass the name of the user. So I will use name controller.txt and email and same for the wallet. Though I am assigning the wallet to zero because once the user create the account then we will show the wallet to zero and we will keep on updating whenever the user will add the money to his wallet. So in the string I need to pass the id here so I will use a random alphanumeric but before writing random alphanumeric function here we need to go to the perf dev and we need to copy the random string package from here and we'll paste it inside the perspxml file. Now to get the random string here, so I will use a random alphanumeric and will pass the length to 10. Now I will get the same id here, so I will use id and will pass the same id inside the map. Now let me show you how it will be shown in the firebase. So let's go to the firebase and in the firestore database where we have just set up some security rules in our last video. You can see the collection section here which will be a collection name users and it will show the id that i just wrote using the random alpha numeric function here and then we'll pass all the users detail in the users collection here but before adding the detail to the database we need to create a folder name service here and inside the service folder i will create a new file name database.dart and we'll create a class name database methods. We'll write future, add user detail, and we'll pass the map string dynamic here that we have just stored in the signup page. And we'll name the user info map. And we'll pass the ID of the document that we need to assign. And we'll return await firebase firestore dot instance and we'll name the collection name to users and we'll pass the doc id here and we'll use a dot set method and we'll pass the map of the user detail so here you can see the future collection name users. So collection name users will be shown in the collection and the doc ID will be shown in the between and at the right it will show the user detail. So we'll pass the database methods in the signup.dart file. So I will write await database methods dot add user detail and we'll pass the map here add user info and we'll pass the id so through the database method we are uploading the data to the firebase but we need to also save the data locally because we need the name email wallet and id of the user again and again in the app so if we call from 
server again and again then it will cover the lot of the code and it will take the lot of time to call the each thing from the server and display on the app to save the user's detail locally in the app we will use a package name shared preference here basically shared preference help us to save the data locally in the flutter app so here i will move to the service folder and will create a new file name shared pref.dart and inside the this dart file i will save all the shared preference method now let's move to the perf dev and we will go and search share preference here and we'll copy the package from here and we'll paste it inside the perspxml file now run the package so let's move to the dart file again and we'll create a class name shared preference helper here and inside the shared preference helper we'll save the name email wallet and the id of the user that we are uploading to the firebase so here through the static method i will create a string name user id key and will save the specific id of the user that we have assigned using the random alphanumeric 10 here and will do same for the name email and wallet Now we have assigned all the string here for id name email and wallet now let's move and we'll create a function name save user id where we'll save the user id using a shared preference method and in the string we'll pass the user id using a get user id string and we'll write share preferences pref equals to await shared preferences dot get instance and we'll return the pref dot set string and we'll pass the user id key and the value get user id so using a shared preference method we'll save the user id here now many of the users might be thinking that why i have used the async await function here async await help us to call the one function completely then move to the next line so if you want that one function calls complete then move to the second function then make sure you use a async await function now we'll save all the string for the name email and the wallet Now we will create a function name get user id through which we can get the user id wherever we want in the app.
and we'll use again shared preferences PREF equals to await shared preference helper shared preferences dot get instance and we'll return the user ID with PREFs dot get string and we'll pass the user id key where we have saved the user specific id now we'll do same for the name email and wallet now let's move to the sign up dot dart file and we'll save all the string that we have wrote inside the shared PREF.dart file. So here I will use again await shared preference helper dot save username and we'll save the username using name controller dot text and we'll write shared preference helper dot save user email to save the user email here and we'll again use mail controller dot text and shared preference helper. to save the user wallet here and the id of the user Now let's go to the wallet.dart file and let me show you how we'll call the things that we have saved in the shared preference method. So here I will create a string name wallet here and we'll use a function name get the shared preference to get all the things that we have saved in the shared preference and we'll use a wallet equals to await shared preference helper dot and we'll use a get user wallet function here to get the wallet of the user and we'll use a set state method now we'll use on the load because i want that whenever the wallet function will be called then the on the load function will be called first and it call all the necessary things that will required on this page so we'll use get shared preference and we'll use a set state now here we'll use a function name in its state here because as i've told you we want that on the load function to be called as soon as the wallet page open in the app now we'll create an int teaser name add here where we will add the wallet and so that how much money has been added to the user wallet here so we'll go to the make payment function here and in the display payment sheet just above the show dialog box we'll add the wallet and show the update as soon as possible so we'll use add and we'll use in dot parse because as i've shown you we are saving the wallet in the form of the string so to add the two integers we need to parse the string to the integer so i will use in dot parse and will pass the wallet where we have the current wallet of the user and will add how much amount does added to the user wallet using a in dot parse amount so it will show the updated wallet here and we'll use await and we'll call the shared preference helper and will update the wallet again so after the dialog box is shown i want to update the wallet in just few seconds so i will again use await method and will call the get shared pref method here so we have wrote the complete function for our wallet section now let's go to the main dot dart file and i will show you what all things i have done just now to add the complete backend for the wallet so first we'll create the account 
using the sign up page then we'll move to the wallet page so let me run the app so i'll use a flutter clean command here then flutter pub get and then flutter run to run the app in the emulator so just wait for a few seconds so as you can see our app has launched successfully now let's move to the sign up page again and we'll create the new account so that i can show you what all things have been uploaded to the firestore database so i will write a name shivam gupta here and will use a random email here and same for the password and we'll click on the sign up button and we'll wait for a few seconds so as you can see we have registered successfully and directly moved to the home page of the app now let's move to the file store and just refresh this page so as you can see the collection name users here what i have told you before with a specific id and the user detail that i have just passed in the sign up page with the specific id name and the wallet so here it is showing the wallet zero which will show in the app so here i will keep on updating the wallet so in the test widget i will pass the value wallet that we have saved in the share preference method if the wallet is null then will show a single child scroll view and once it is called then will show the wallet page here now we'll hot reload so as you can see the number changed to zero so now let's move and add the 500 dollar to our wallet so i will click on the 500 dollar container and we'll fill all the details and we'll proceed to pay So as you can see payment is successful and $500 has been updated and it is showing that $500 has been added to our wallet here. Now we'll do same for the 1000 and we'll fill all the details regarding the card number date cvc and zip code and will pay so as you can see payment has been successful and our wallet changes to 1500 so our last digit was 500 and we added the 1000 dollar now and it is changes to 1500 dollar so it is working brilliantly and our wallet is updating whenever we adding the amount of money in our wallet but it is not the complete case here i also want to update the data in our firestore database where we have shown the wallet section so we need to update this wallet here so here it is showing the 1500 dollar so i want that whenever i will add the money to the wallet then it frequently update the data to the firestore database too so now let's move to the database dot dart file and we'll create a function to update the wallet in our file store so i will use update user wallet function here and will pass the string id because we need to pass the specific doc id here where we need to update the wallet and will return await and will pass firebase firestore dot instance and will pass the collection name users here and will pass the specific doc id so we need to update the wallet field here so we need to write as it is wrote in the firestore and we need to pass the amount what we want to show in the wallet section 
and we'll do pass same on the wallet field here. So it is done. Now let's move to the wallet.dart file again and we'll call the function that I've just wrote here. So we'll use await method again and we will use database methods dot update user wallet and we'll pass the amount and the ID. So here I need to go to the string and we need to call the ID of the user from the shared preference method here. and we'll first pass the user id or the document id then we'll pass the total amount so i will pass the integer add to string so it is done now we'll hot reload let's go and add the two thousand dollar to our wallet and i will pass the card number here and all the details regarding the payment and we'll click on pay. So our payment is successful, but we can't update the wallet here. We are facing some error here. So let me see what error we are facing. So as you can see, it is showing the null check operator used on a null value. I think the ID we have just passed in the shared preference method is null. So I need to run the complete apps here. So I will go to the main.dart file and will call the bottom name, reload it again or hot restart. Then we'll add a $1,000 again. So our payment is successful and as you can see our wallet has been updated and added the $1000 to the wallet. Now let's move and check the Firestore database. So as you can see our wallet has been updated to 4500 that I have just shown you on the app. So it is working brilliantly and how much money we are adding on the app it is frequently updating it to the Firestore database. So do not forget to hit the like button because we have successfully added all the function regarding the wallet and our wallet page is working brilliantly with our Stripe payment gateway. Now for an instance, if the user want to add the random money, I mean like $49, $50 or $52, then they can also do by using the add money button that I've just made in the UI. So if they click on the add money button, then there will be a dialog box where they need to fill the amount they want to add in the wallet and they can add any of the amount to his wallet rather than clicking on the specific container of 100, 500 and 1000 dollars. So let move to the wallet.dart file again and we'll create a dialog box here using the alert dialog. So I will write future and will write the function name open edit. And we'll pass a show dialog function here and we'll write alert dialog. And in the content, I will pass the single child scroll view and in the child will pass the container, then the column and in the column will first pass the row where we'll so the close button so if the user want to close the dialog box then they can use a close icon here and we'll wrap up the icon with a gesture director and in the on tab we'll pass a navigator dot pop in text to pop out the dialog box
Now we'll use a size box dot width 60.0 and we'll pass the text widget using the center widget. Name add money here and we'll give the styling to the text widget here. and we'll pass the customize color code inside the color function and font weight now in the column i will write the size box i 20.0 and we'll write a one more text widget here suggesting the user to write the amount on the text field that will pass on the container here. So in the text field, we need to pass the controller so i will go and write text editing controller amount controller is equals to new text editing controller and we'll pass the same controller in the text field that i have just wrote here so i'll write amount controller and we'll use a decoration input decoration to give the decoration to the container or a text field here Now we'll create a customize button using the container so that user can click on the pay and can directly add the money to his wallet. Now We'll wrap up the add money button that I just created to with a gesture director and we'll write a open edit and now we'll move to the pay button and in the on tap method I will call the make payment function here but before that we need to pop out the dialog box so we'll use a navigator dot pop context and we'll pass the amount inside the make payment function using the amount controller dot text so now we'll hot reload it again so as you can see when i'll click on the add money button then it is showing the dialog box but we need to center the button so i will use a center widget here so now it's look good now in enter amount text field i will write 200 here and will pay using the stripe payment gateway so our payment is successful and as you can see our 200 dollar has been added to the wallet and it has been frequently updated to the Firestore database. Now let's move to the lib folder and we'll create a new folder name admin here and inside the admin folder I will create a new file name admin login dot dot where we'll create the admin login page where the user can enter the username and password and can directly move to the admin panel of the app and here I will create a stateful widget name admin login here. now scaffold and we'll write a background color here and i'll pass the customized color code here 0x ff then the customized color code
now body container child stack and inside the stack i will write children and in the children first i will write container and in container will pass the margin h inset dot only and will give the margin from the top by using the media query to make the app highly responsive now media query dot of context dot size dot height divide by 2 and padding edge inset dot only top 45.0 and left 20.0 right 20.0 now we'll give the height again by using the media query method here so media query dot of context dot size dot height and we'll do same for the width now decoration box decoration and here i'll pass the gradient color here if you are following this food delivery app series then you know why i have used the linear gradient color here and how to use a linear gradient color inside the container so in the colors i will first pass the customized color code here now begin alignment dot top left and alignment dot bottom right now i will also pass the border radius in the box decoration so we'll write border radius dot vertical and from the top i will pass the radius dot elliptical because i want to provide the border radius from the top but from the x and y axis i will write media query dot of context dot size dot width and will pass the 110 in the y axis the reason for using the radius dot elliptical is because i want to provide the radius from the x and y axis of the app so to provide the radius from the x or y axis you can use the radius dot elliptical here now we'll write container and we'll pass the margin here so edge insert dot only left 30.0 right 30.0 and top 60.0 and in the child i will first pass the form key and in the key i will write form key which will be the global key so let's move and assign the global key here so final global key form state form key is equal to global key so if any of the users is watching this video from the food delivery app series and they have didn't watch my other five parts then you might not get why i have used a global key here so I will request you all to follow the complete food delivery app series playlist and you will get what all things I am writing here because I have explained each and everything in the last part of this app series so I will paste the playlist link in the comment box so you can click on and can follow the complete food delivery app series now we'll write children and inside the children i will pass the text widget here so in the text widget i will write let's start with admin and will give the styling to the text widget here we'll use our text style so it is done now we'll give the size box height 30.0 now we'll use a material widget to give the elevation to the container here 
now we'll write border radius to give the border radius to the material which it so border radius dot circular 20 and in the child i will first pass the container here and inside the container i will give the height using the media query again so media query dot of context dot size dot height divide by 2.2 so reason for writing the media query and dividing it by 2.2 is because through the media query it will give me the complete height of the screen by dividing it by any digit it will give the specific height i need for the container and it will be highly responsive in the different devices if you can test it now decoration box decoration and we'll write color colors dot white and we'll provide the border radius to the container here now you might be thinking that what all code i am writing in the admin login dot dot sorry let me show you what all things i have wrote inside the admin login dot dot here now let's move to the main dot dot file and here i will call the admin login here and we'll hot restart it again so as you can see the complete page of the admin login page and here you can see the circular container which i have wrote by using the radius dot elliptical and you can see that by giving the top radius dot elliptical media query dot of context and high and on the y axis 110 it give me the circular container here from the top with a x and y axis now from the top it give the height divide by 2 which will be the half of the container height from the top and you can see the text widget which i have just wrote let's start with admin and the material widget at the top of the container so everything is written inside the stack that's why you can see that each container overlap with other container easily now i will write child column children and we'll give the size box height 50.0 now container and we'll give the padding here from left top and bottom and we'll give the margin from the horizontal direction and we'll use decoration box decoration border dot all and we'll pass the customize color code again in the border i want to provide the border radius to the container so i'll use a border radius here and we'll write child center and in the child we'll pass the text form field and we'll pass the validator if value is null or empty then we'll return place enter username and in the controller i will pass the text editing controller so let's move and write text editing controller user name controller equals to new text editing controller and we'll pass username controller in the controller of the text form field now i will copy the same text form field and will paste it inside the column for the password of the admin panel now you can see that there is a line at the bottom in the text form field so i will remove the line from the bottom in the text form field by using the input decoration here 
so let's move and write decoration input decoration and write border input border dot none now we'll hot reload it again so as you can see that by just writing one line it removes the underline in the text form field now we'll do same for the password now let's move to the input decoration again because here i will write a hint text username and we'll pass the hint style to give the styling to the hint that i have just wrote here so in the text style i will write color and we'll pass the customized color code again so you can see the hint here username now i'll copy the same case and we'll paste it inside the password and we'll just change all the things that we have wrote inside the text form field so i will remove and we'll write the hint text password here and we'll create one more text editing controller for the password so user password controller is equals to new text editing controller and we'll write please enter password here and we'll pass the text editing controller in the controller for the password now we'll hot reload it again now size box height 40.0 now we'll create a customize button so that user can directly click on login button and can log in inside the admin panel so we'll first pass the padding here then margin now we'll give the width media query dot of context dot size dot width so in the decoration first we'll pass the color here so i will write colors dot black and we'll write border radius dot circular 10 here now in the child i will write center and we'll pass the text widget here where i will write login and we'll pass the style text style colors dot white font size 20.0 and font weight dot bold here so it is done now i will hot reload it again so as you can see the login button here now let's move and create the function so that user can directly click on the login button and can directly move to the admin panel of the app so here i will use the fixed username and fixed password for the admin panel because it will be unique so that any of the user who are using the app might cannot enter the admin panel easily it must be secure because the admin can manage the complete app from the admin panel so we need to create a unique username and password here so in the username i will write peter which will be the username for the admin panel and password 123456 and we'll click on the login button and can directly move to the admin panel of the app but let's move to the firebase and here i need to create a collection name admin here where in the id i first need to write a peter which will be the username for the admin panel and the password that i have just shown you in the app which will be 123456 now let's move to the admin login dot dart file again and here i will create a function name login admin
and we'll write firebase firestore dot instance dot collection and we'll pass the collection name that I've just stored in the firebase which will be the admin and we'll use a dot get method and after getting the firebase firestore we'll use dot then and here I will use a snapshot to get the document that we have just passed in the admin collection here. So snapshot dot docs dot for each element for each result. If our result data which will be the id and it not equals to the username dot controller dot text where the admin have entered the username then we will show the snack bar here that the enter username is not correct. So I will move to the signup.dart file again and we will copy the same so snack bar and we will paste it here and we will change just the text here. So we will write your id is not correct which will indicate the admin that the id they have just wrote in the admin is not correct now we'll copy the same if condition and we'll write in the else if that if the result dot data password is not equals to the password that the user have entered in the password text field then we'll show the text your password is not correct and if both the statement is false then we'll move to the else statement here and we'll use root to directly move to the home page of the admin panel so in the admin i will create a home admin dot dart file here and we'll give the stateful widget name home admin we will directly push the user to the root that i have just wrote above So it is done. Now let's move to the login button and we'll wrap up the login button with a gesture detector and we'll pass the login admin function here. Now we'll hot restart it again. So here you can see the login page of the admin and here I will first write the username so I'm writing Peter here now we'll enter the password 123456 and we'll click on the login button so as you can see we have successfully logged in inside the home page of the admin so from where the admin can manage the complete app so now let's move to the home admin dot file and here I will create a container so that admin can directly add the food item to the app. So we'll create a container and we'll give the margin as insert dot only top 50.0 left 20.0 and right 20.0. Now in the column 
आई विल फर्स्ट राइट द सेंटर चाइल्ड टेक्स्ट विच इट एंड इन साइड द टेक्स्ट विच इट आई विल राइट अ टेक्स्ट होम एडमिन विच विल बी द हेडलाइन ऑफ आर एडमिन पैनल एंड विल गिव द स्टाइल बाई यूजिंग द एप विच इट क्लास सो एप विच इट डॉट हेडलाइन टेक्स फिल स्टाइल Now I will hot restart it again. So let me show you what all things I have wrote inside the home admin page. So we'll go to the main dot dot file and we'll call the home admin here and we'll hot restart it again. So you can see the headline of our admin panel, which is home admin. Now let's move and we'll create a container in the column widget. and we'll wrap up the container with a material which it so we'll write material and we'll write elevation 10.0 and we'll provide the border radius to the material which it so border radius dot circular 10 now child center and we'll write child again now container padding h inset dot all four decoration box decoration and in the box decoration i'll pass the will pass the color so i will use colors dot black now border radius border radius dot circular 10 now child row children now we'll write padding edge inset dot all 6.0 image dot asset so we will get the random put item image here so that user can get the hint to add the put item by clicking the container here so i will write images put dot jpg i will get the image that i have saved in the images folder and will give the specific height and width to the image and fit box fit dot cover if you want you can add any of the images according to your choice and download it in the images folder and you can call the image by using the image dot asset function there is no necessary to copy the exact image that i am pasting on this admin panel i will write size box again and will provide the width 30.0 text and we'll write add food item now we'll give styling to the text widget by using the text style so you can see the text name add food items here now let's move to the admin folder and we'll create a new file name add food dot dot and we'll create a stateful widget name add food now let's move to the home admin again and we'll wrap up the material widget with a gesture detector and in the on tab by using the navigator dot push method i will call the add food dot dot file so that user can directly move to the add food page and can add the food item to the app so now we'll hot reload it again 
now i will change the scaffold body container child column children now we'll give the app bar from the top so we'll write app bar and inside the app bar i will first write the leading where i will show the icon dot back ios so that user can directly go to the home admin page and can access all the function he want to do for the app now we'll pass the customized color code for the icon that we are passing in the leading basically leading in the app bar is that it shows the icon on the left side of the app bar so if you want to show any of the icon from the left side of the app bar you can use the leading here now we'll wrap up with the gesture detector and in the on tap method i will write navigator dot pop context to pop it to the home page now we'll use a center title true because here i will mention the title here so if i will make center title to true it will directly center my title in the app bar so in the title i will first pass the text widget here so in the text widget i will write a text add item and we'll give the style by using the app widget class now let's move to the column now in the container i will write margin edge insert dot only left 20.0 right 20.0 and from the top 20.0 and same from the bottom so in the column i will write cross cross axis alignment dot start and in the children will write the text which it name link the text upload the item picture here and will give the styling to the text which it again by using the app which it class here you can see that there is a complete white screen so i will hot reload it again so you can see the all things that i have just added in the add food dot dot file now let's move and create the container here so that user can directly click on the container and by using the gallery they can upload the image to the firebase storage so first i will write the material and will give the elevation 4.0 now border radius dot circular and will write 20 now child container and in the container i will first write the width which will be the specific width of 150 now we'll write decoration box decoration border border dot all now we'll pass the color colors dot black with 1.5 and border radius 20 so here you can see the container now we need to give the height to the container so i will write height 150 here so here you can see the container that i just created by using the material widget now we'll wrap up the material widget with the center widget to center the widget here now we'll write child icon icons dot camera so i have told you 
that when the user will click on this container then by using the image picker method the app will pick the image from the gallery by the user's choice and directly upload the image to the firebase storage and we can access that image in the app easily so we'll give the size box height 30.0 So we'll pass the text widget item name and we'll give the styling to the text widget by using the app widget class. Now we'll write the size box again and we'll make the text field so that user can directly enter the item name. So I'm creating a text field by using the container widget here. So in the decoration, box decoration, we'll pass the customized color code here and border radius dot circular 10. Now child text field and in the decoration, input decoration, we'll mention the border, input border dot none so that we can't see any underline in the text field and in the hint text i will pass the enter item name suggesting the user to enter the item name in this text field and will give the hint style to the hint that i have just passed here So here you can see the text field with a inter item name. Now let's move and we'll write text editing controller name controller equals to new text editing controller. And we'll pass the name controller to the controller of the text field. Now I'll copy the same text and text field that I just wrote for the item name and we'll paste it below and we'll change the item name to item price and we'll suggest the user to enter the item price to the text field here. Now I'll assign one more controller to control this text field for the item price. So we'll write price controller in the controller of the text field for the price. Now we'll copy the same thing again for the item detail and we'll change it to item detail. And here might be the case that the user will enter more than one line in the item detail. So I will use a max line in the text field to increase the length of the text field and we'll assign it to 6 and hot reload. So as you can see, after giving the max line to 6, it increases the text field size for the item detail. Now we'll write the controller for the item detail here and in the controller, we'll first pass the detail controller. So now let's move and create the drop down button because I want that whenever the user will click on the drop down button then there will be the specific category for the food item he want to upload the food. For example, if he want to upload the burger then he will select the burger category from the select category drop down button. 
so you have seen on the home page of the app there are basically four categories so let's move and create the drop down button in the add item page so here i will first write container now child i will write drop down button hide underline and in the child i will first pass the drop down button and will name it to string now will pass the items and on change method here now i need to provide the drop down color so i will pass the colors dot white and in the hint i will first pass the text widget here and naming the text widget to select category and will give the styling to the hint text by using the hint style but before that i will provide the icon and icon size and will use icons dot arrow drop down to indicate the user that there is a drop down menu to select a category and will pass color colors dot black now in the value i need to pass the value that i will keep on updating so i will use a string and will write value now i will write final and will provide the list that we will pass in the drop down menu so i am naming the list items and will assign all the things one by one that we want to show in the drop down so let's move to the main dot dart file and i will show you what all category we need to add in the drop down so let's move to the bottom navigation bar and this will directly take us to the home page so here you can see there are the four categories namely ice cream pizza salad and burger so let's go and add that all in the add put dot dart file and here first i will write ice cream then burger then salad salad then pizza now i'll call the same list in the drop down so in the items i will write items dot map and we'll pass the item that we will get one by one from the items list and we'll use our drop down menu button now in the drop down menu button we'll write a text widget and we'll call the item that we get from the item list here now we'll assign the drop down menu item to dot to list function to to change it to the list now we need to assign the drop down menu item to the string to get all the text here now we'll give the styling to the text widget here so style text style and in the font size i will write 18.0 and color colors dot black and in the on change method i will first write the value and will use a set state so that i can update the value string that i have just wrote above so this dot value is equals to value to update the value that we'll get from the items list here now let's move to the home admin again so that i can show you what all things i have just wrote in the add item here so here you can see the overflow error because 
I forgot to write a single child scroll view so that user can scroll this page easily. So let's move to the add food.dart file again and we'll wrap up the container with a single child scroll view. And we'll hot reload it again. But here you can see there are still some error because it is saying that item value doesn't match with the length we have passed and it is not true. So I think I have missed some of the part in the code. So I made a small mistake here. I forgot to write a value in the drop menu item. So we'll assign it to item again. Now we'll hot restart it again. So you can see the select category option here. But before that, let me provide the height between the two widgets here. So I'll provide height 20.0. And I will give some more margin from the bottom. Now I'll hot reload it again. So here you can see the different category. Now let's move and I will copy the same text widget for the category and we'll change it to select category and we'll give the height between the two widgets. Now we'll hot reload it again. Now let's move and we'll give some decoration to the container here. So we'll give the border radius customize color code and we'll give the width media query dot off context dot size dot width. Now we'll hot reload it again. So we'll so now let's provide the padding too. So we'll use edge inset dot symmetric horizontal 10.0. Now border radius. Circular 10. So here our select category drop down menu button is done. Now I will show you how it is working. So when I'll click on the drop down button, you can see the user can choose the category according to his choice like ice cream, burger. Now let's move and we'll create a customized button here name add so that user can add the item that he had just filled above like image, name, price and detail. But before that, let's move to the pubdev file and we need to copy the some packages from here and we'll paste it inside the perspectml file. So here our first package name image picker here. So we'll copy the image picker package and we'll paste it inside the perspectml file. Now here comes our second package name which will be the Firebase storage. As I have told you, we'll also upload the image to the firebase storage and we'll get the image from the firebase so we need this package to store the image in the firebase storage now run all the packages that i've just wrote in the perspectml file now let's move to the add put the dart file here and we'll create a function name get image the reason for writing the get image function is because i want to get the image from the library or the gallery where I have stored all the images in my device. So here I will write var image equals to await and through the image picker method I will pick the image. So I will assign the image picker here by using final image picker picker is equal to image picker. Now, so I'm assigning 
here a selected image text within the file because the image we will be pick from the picker will be in form of the file that we have choose from the gallery now await will write picker dot pick image so that we can pick the image now we'll write the source image source dot gallery because i have told you that we will pick the image from the gallery but here you can see there is a two option from where you can pick the image like camera and gallery so you can also use a camera here so whenever you click on the upload item picture then camera app will open and it will tell you to click the image and the clicked image will be directly shown to the app here now we'll assign the file that we have picked in the set selected image and we'll use a set state now if selected image is equals equals to null then we will show that the camera to pick the image and if the image is already picked and it is stored in the selected image then we'll show the image by using the image dot file here so in the image dot file we'll pass the selected image where our image has been stored now feed box fit dot cover so that the image will cover the complete width and height of the container that we have just assigned above now let's move to the image picker because in the readme file you can see that for the ios you need to add this three things like nas like ns photo library usage description ns camera usage description and ns microphone usage description so you need to add this all in the info.plist file which is in the runner folder so let's move to the ios folder here now in the info.plist file we need to save all the three commands that i have just shown you in the readme file so as you can see i pasted all the three commands now let's move to the terminal and i will write a flutter clean here then flutter run to run the app in our ios emulator here so we have successfully launched the app now i will assign the same password and the username that i have shown you in the last part so we are in the add item screen but before we pick the image now we need to wrap up with a gesture director and we need to call the get image function so after clicking the icon here it is suggest us to pick the image from the gallery now click on done so as you can see the we have successfully picked the image from the gallery where the all the images are stored in the phone device now to give the border radius to the image here we need to wrap up with a clip react widget and we need to pass a border radius dot circular 20 here so here i will create a function name upload item so that i can directly upload the item to the firebase database and first we will store the image to the firebase storage so we'll check that if selected image is not equals to null and the name controller dot text is not equals to null and we'll pass same command for the price and the detail the reason for passing this four thing is because i want that user to fill all the detail then 
he can access the add button to add the item directly to the app. Now we'll create a string add ID and we'll pass a random alphanumeric 10. And here I am creating a procedure to upload the data to the Firebase storage. So reference Firebase storage ref equals to Firebase storage dot instance dot ref and here I will create a folder name blog images and will assign the child add id which will be the random id that I just stored in the string. So here I will show you what all things I will do in the Firebase storage. So now let's move to the storage here and we'll click on the get start button. Click on next, done, again on done. So as you can see, it is creating a default bucket to store the folder and files here. Now we'll change the same rules what we have done for the Firestore database to upload the image to the Firebase. So we'll change it to true and we'll click on the publish button. So it is done. Now the blog image which I was wrote in the child, it will create a folder here and inside the blog image folder, it will store all the images with a unique random ID which we have stored in the add ID string. Now we'll write final upload task task equals to firebase storage ref dot put file where we'll pass the selected image now where download URL and here it will create a URL of the image that we will just upload to the Firebase because if it create a download URL then we can access that URL in the Firestore database to manage the image in the app. So let's move to the database dot dart file. Here I will create a function name add food item and here I will pass the collection name which will be the name because in the categories I have passed a four category which I have shown you in the last video which is ice cream, burger, pizza and salad. So here it will create a collection for each category and in that category will keep on uploading the document. So in the name I'll pass a category one by one. Let me show you how I will execute that. So here I will create a map string dynamic. Write a map name add item and in the image will pass the URL link and in the name will write name controller dot text and we'll pass the price same controller dot text and the detail Now await database methods dot add food item and here we'll pass a map name add item and in the name as I've told you we'll pass a category. So we'll pass a 
value where we all keep on updating the category by using the drop down button now we'll write dot then after uploading the data to the file store database here i will show a so snack bar so i will paste the snack bar here and will name it to food item has been added successfully which will indicate the admin that after clicking on the add button the item has been added successfully to the app now we'll wrap up the customize button with a gesture detector and in the on tap method i will pass a upload item function here and will hot restart it again rather than entering the password again and again for the admin i will directly pass a home admin in the main.dart file and here i will click on the camera button and will first upload the image then will write the item name here though i know that it is a food app but i am uploading the random image that it is stored in my emulator so in the item name i will write pizza and will pass a item price 45 and will write a item detail the food is really good and contain lots of ingredients now we'll select a category ice cream here and click on the add button so as you can see food item has been added successfully now let's move to the firebase and check our collection have been created name ice cream with a document of the detail so here you can see the collection name ice cream with a document where we have stored all the things and here you can see the image with a specific link of the image when i'll open this image link to the new tab then here you can see the image that we have just uploaded by a emulator now we'll go to the storage and in the storage you can see the block images folder with a specific id of that image that we have uploaded from the emulator so you can see that we have successfully added a feature in our app to upload the image to the firebase storage and access that image in the firestore database so for this success do not forget to hit that like button and do not forget to hit that subscribe button so that you won't miss out on any of the videos we upload on this channel so now let's move to the home page and here i will show you all the food items that we have just stored in the firestore database so here you can see the four categories in our home page and after clicking the each category, I want to show the specific food item for that category in first horizontal form, then in the vertical form. And after clicking to the image, it is also show the food item in the detail with the name, image, quantity, etc. Now let's move and call the image from the Firestore database. But let's move to the Firebase and here I've created a collection for each food item that I've just shown you in the app. But before moving to the code, I am hoping that you are following this food delivery app series because we have completed the seven parts in this series. And you, if you are following this food delivery app series from the first part, then I am comfortable to say that you have learned lot of things till now if you are following this complete food delivery app series and if you missed any of the part from this series then you can see the link of the complete food delivery app series playlist in the comment box though i have tried my best to explain this series in more easy way and if anyone is learning the flutter language from the scratch then it will be very easy for them to follow this complete series though our food delivery app series is coming to the end and i am sure that there will be a more series in the coming future so now let's move to the code again so let's move to the 
database dot dart file and here i will create a function by using stream query snapshot so that i can get all the details that i have just stored in the firebase so here i will create a function name get food item and in the string i will write first name and again by giving name i mean to say that i will pass the category one by one so firebase firestore dot instance dot collection and will pass the specific category and will snapshot all the documents that will be available in that category now here i will create a stream food item stream now many of the users might be thinking that why i have used a stream here basically stream builder helps us to get all the documents or data from the firestore database and it is very comfortable to use in the app because it shows all the updates in the real time and it takes just a few seconds to load all the data in our app so i am suggesting that if you are getting the data from the firestore database then make sure that you always use a stream builder here now on the load function i will write food item stream and by the database method i will get all the documents that available in the pizza collection here and in the edit state i will write on the load function so that it quickly loads as the app starts now which it all items and will return stream builder and in the builder will first pass context a sync snapshot snapshot and in the stream we will pass a same stream that we have just assigned above which will be the food item stream and in the return we need to remove the async here because it can't be assigned in the widget function now snapshot dot hash data and by using the snapshot dot hash data it checks that if the data is available in the file store database or not so if it is available then we'll use a list view dot builder to show all the documents in the form of list view and in the item builder will first pass the context and index of all the document and if the snapshot didn't have any data then will show a circular progress indicator and will assign the padding as inset dot zero so there will be no padding in the list view and in the item count i will write snapshot dot data dot docs dot length to get all the length of the document that we have just stored in the firestore database and will give a sync wrap to true and will assign the scroll direction axis dot horizontal which will be the this list view in the home page so document snapshot ds equals to snapshot dot data dot docs index to get the index of the document now i'll copy the same container that we have wrote just for the ui in the stream builder
so image dot network because as i have shown you the image that we have just stored is in the form of http link so we need to use a image dot network and ds image to get the image and the ds name to get the name of the food item here Now we'll get the price by using again DS method. So it is done. Now let's move and we'll call the function in the column widget. So I will remove all these things that we have wrote just for the UI and we'll call the all item function here. So it is showing the render box error because we need to wrap up with a container and we need to pass a fixed height to the container so that it can load all the food items in the form of the list view. So I need to give the height of the container to 70 here. Now we'll hot reload. So here you can see the image that we, so here you can see the food items that we have just got from the Firestore database. Now I will provide the border radius to the image. So I will wrap up with the clip react here. I will give the border radius to the image. Now you might be thinking that there is already a border radius in the container. So why we are again giving the border radius to the image here? The reason for doing that is because if you are providing the image and if you are giving the image border radius to the container then it will not wrap up with a container. You need to give a clip react widget to give a border radius to the image here. So make a mark if you are a developer that do not wrap up the image with a container and give the border radius in the decoration box. Always wrap up the image with a clip react widget and pass the border radius to give the border radius to the image. So if you like that hint that I have just given now, please do not forget to hit that like button. Now here you can see in the pizza collection there are the two documents that we have just got in our app. Now we will show the pizza document in the vertical form. So I will create one more widget and will name the collection name all items vertically. Now I'll copy the same container again for the vertical position of our food items and will paste it inside the widgets function name add items vertically and will paste it here. and we'll do image.network and we'll pass the same data that we have just done for the other function Now we'll hot restart it again and here you can see the all items in the vertical direction. We need to remove one more container that we have just wrote for the UI and we'll give the margin from the bottom to the list view.
will remove the height from the top. Now it's look good. Now you can see that here are the four categories, but it doesn't show the food item according to the category I select. So I go to the specific category and I will call a strip according to that. So food item stream await database methods and will get the food item and will pass a specific category here which will be the ice cream now we'll do same for the pizza salad and burger So as you can see that when I will press the first category here which is ice cream then it's showing all the data that we have stored in the ice cream category and will shift to the pizza, salad and burger. Though here you can see that for just a testing purpose I have added all the similar food image but you can add the specific food image and a name with a detail according to your choice from the admin panel we have just created to upload the image to the Firestore database. Now after clicking to the image we need to also change the data to the food detail section. So in the details I will first write a string image name detail to get the image name and detail and image.network to get the image that is on the http form if you write directly name detail price then it will not get the detail of the each string that we have just stored above we need to start with widget dot to get the widget detail that we are just passing to this details dot dot file. Now in the details, I will write detail and will pass the ds detail to get the detail of the specific document. And we'll do same for the name price. and the image now we'll hot restart it again so as you can see when i will click to a specific food items then it shows the image name and the food detail here now let's move to the burger and here i will click to the burger and when i'll press then it shows same the image detail though there is the image with a background but if you want then you can pass the image without the background and more detail this i have done just for the testing purpose but if you want you can upload a different images and can make your app more attractive in many ways so here i have added the burger image now if you see when i will increase the quantity then our total price is not increasing according to the quantity of the food item we want to order which doesn't give a specific price of the food item that user have to pay for the quantity he needs to order so 
what i will do now is that i will keep on increasing the total price as soon as the user changes the quantity here so in the end i will write a total and will assign it to zero and will give the total a specific price of the item by using the init state we'll use in dot parse here because widget dot price is in the form of the string so we need to parse it to the integer so we'll write in dot parse here now we'll pass same the total to the total price and we'll assign it to string here and in the plus plus a which help us to increase the quantity of the food item there we will write total equals to total plus in dot parse widget dot price to increase the total of the amount when will increase by one food item quantity here and will pass the same case in a minus minus a but will minus a total by one food item if we decrease the quantity here now we'll hot reload it again so it is zero because we need to hot restart so i will hot restart it again and we'll go to the burger and as i will increase the quantity here then you can see the total price it is showing for the three four five quantity and it's it is keep on changing in just few seconds according to the quantity which changes here so it working really good now here comes a add to cart button here because i want that after the user select the quantity he can directly add the item to the cart and can place the order by using the wallet so i will use a map string dynamic and will write a function name add food to cart and here i will pass the name of the item so i will write name widget name and will pass the quantity of the item so we'll write a dot to string because a is in the form of integer now we'll pass the total amount for the specific quantity now the image of the food item so widget dot image so in the database we need to add the food item to the cart of the user so here i will create a function name add food to cart and in the users collection will pass one more collection name cart and will pass a add user info map to pass the map database method add 
food to cart and we'll write add food to cart and in the id we'll pass a id of the user to upload the food item to his cart by using his specific id so we need to get it through a shared preference where we have saved the specific user id so in the string i will write id here and we'll create a get the shared pref function and in the id i will write shared preference helper dot get user id to get his user id and in the on the load function i will pass the same function name Now we'll pass a specific ID to the database method or restart the file and let's move to the burger again. Now I will select the quantity 4 here and it is showing us the 200 amount. But before that I need to copy the so snack bar here because I want to suggest that user that item has been directly added to the cart or not. So we'll write food added to cart. I will hot restart it again and I will select the quantity 3 here which is a total price of 20 and food added to the cart here. Now we'll refresh the page. So here is my ID and here is a cart collection with a ID of the document where we have just uploaded with a quantity 3 and the total amount 150. So as you can see how brilliantly our app is working and we have successfully added the food item to the our food cart. One now let's move to the profile page and here I will write scaffold. As I have shown you the profile page in the starting of the video where you can see the cup container at the top. So here in the stack I will first write container as insert.only left 40.0 and will give the padding from the top left and right position. Now we will write height media query dot of context dot size dot height divided by 4.3. Now we'll give the width media query dot of context dot size dot width so that it can cover the complete width of the screen. Now in the decoration I will write box decoration and we'll first pass the color so colors dot black. Now border radius, border radius dot vertical. I will give the border radius from the bottom. So I will use radius dot elliptical. The reason for writing radius dot elliptical is because radius dot elliptical help us to give the border radius from the x and y axis of the container. So it can help us to make a curvy container here. So as you can see here. So now I want to show the user's image here so that user can directly change the image from the profile page and can upload the image according to his choice. So here I will use some random tick for now from the images folder then we will 
connect it with a firebase storage so that user can change the profile pic according to his choice now we'll write container and we'll give the margin as insert dot only from top media query dot of context dot size dot height divided by 6.5 now in the child i will write material elevation 10.0 and we'll give the border radius to the material widget so border radius dot circular 60 Now child will use a clip react widget because as I have told you we will use image dot asset here. So to give the border radius to the image we need to wrap up with a clip react widget and then in the child we will write image dot asset and we will get the image from the images folder and we will write exact image file name which will be boy dot jpg and in the height I will write 120 and with 120 and paid box width dot cover now let's hot reload so here you can see the image of the user now we need to center the image so i will wrap up with the center so here you can see the image of that specific user now padding and padding as in set dot only top 70.0 and we'll write child row children and in the text i will pass the username here so for an instance i am writing shivam gupta and we'll give the style to the text widget by using text style and in the color i will write color colors dot white and we'll give the font size and font weight. Now we need to center the text. So we'll wrap up with a center widget. So here you can see that if you wrap up the padding with a center widget, then it will not work here because we have used a row widget here. We need to write main main axis dot alignment dot center in the row widget so that we can center the text widget here. So here you can see that by using main main axis alignment dot center in the row widget we can successfully center the user name here we will also give the font family to poppins now in the profile page as i want to show the user name at the first then the email then the terms and condition of the app and the delete and logout button so first i will create a container and will give the margin now child material and border radius border radius dot circular 10 and we'll use a elevation 2.0 now child again and we'll use a container and in the container widget i will write padding edge inset dot symmetric vertical 15.0 and horizontal 10.0 now i will write decoration box decoration color colors dot white and we'll give the border radius so we'll write border radius dot circular 10 now in the container i will write child row children and we'll use icon icons dot person now we'll give the color to the icon here so which will be white now size box with 20.0 and we need a column widget here because as i have told you we will show the user name here so first we'll show the name and then the user name here 
by using the column widget many of the users might be thinking that from where we will get the username in our profile page if you are following this series from the starting then you know that we keep on saving the data locally in the shared preference so we have also saved the user name and the email in the shared preference so we will get the user name from the shared preference So here you can see the container. We have wrote all the things in the color white. So we need to change it to black. So it is done. Now we'll hot reload. Now I want to move the name and the username into the right side. So we'll write cross cross axis alignment dot start in the column widget. So it is done. Now we'll give the height from the top. So I'll use size box dot height twenty point zero. So we'll paste one more container below the name, and here we'll show the user email. As I told you that there will be a one more section named terms and condition, so that user can see all the terms and condition related to this app. Now we'll create two more buttons for delete and log out. So now let's move and we'll add the backend to our profile page. So we'll move to the shared preference dot dot file and here I will create one more string for the user profile key because I want to save the user profile URL in the user profile key and then we can use that in our profile page. So we'll create one more save user profile. Function here, and we'll use a get user profile string to get the user profile pic, and we'll save it to the save user profile function. Now we'll also create a get user profile so that we can get the user profile URL in our profile page, and then we can use that in our app. So here I will create a string name profile name and email. So we'll get the user profile name and his email from the shared preference. So we'll create a get the shared pref function here. And we'll write a sync profile is equals to await. Shared preference helper dot get user profile. Now we'll also get the username, so we'll write name equals to await shared preference helper dot get username. And we'll do same for the email. Now we'll also write a set state function in the get set preference function so that we can quickly rename all the strings that we'll get from the set preference. We'll create on this load function, and in this function, I will write again a sync await. Get the shared pref function and we'll again use a set state. Now in the init state, I will again will call the on this load function because I want that whenever the profile page loads, then it frequently calls all the details from the shared preferences. So let me explain you how I will upload the user profile pic here. So when the user will click to this image, then through the image picker, 
we will pick the image from the gallery and that image will be directly upload to the firebase storage and we will get the link of that image and will save that link of that image in the profile get user profile shared preference so that we can use the image again easily in our app so i have already created the image picker and a function to upload the user image from the admin panel if you have seen my last video of this series so we'll copy the same function and we'll paste it in the profile page and we'll just make some changes in the code so we'll call the image picker function here and for the file i will call dot dot io and we'll do same for the random and the firebase storage so we'll remove the map method because we didn't want to upload any of the user data to the firestore database we just need the link from the firestore storage so we'll write share preference helper dot save user profile and we'll save the user profile from the download url link and we'll again use a await method now we'll write a set state so if name is equals equals to null then we'll show the circular progress indicator here suggesting the user that it will take some time to get the name from the shared preference and then it will show in the app so if you don't write a circular progress indicator here then it will frequently throws the error for just one and two seconds and then it will show the name and the email and the profile of the user so which will be not look good when the user are using the app so if you show a circular progress indicator then it will indicate that the user that the data of the specific user has been loading and it will show them in just few seconds now image i will write if selected image is equals equals to null then we'll wrap up with a gesture director to the image asset and we'll call the image picker here so we have get we have got the image picker function in the get image function so we'll call a get image function and if the selected image is not null then we'll show the image of that specific user so we'll get the image from image dot file function and we'll get the selected image from there so we'll write image dot network because i want to first get the user profile where we are saving the user pick through the shared preference method and if the profile is equals equals to null then we'll show this asset image so you are clear why i'm using the profile is equals equals to null here so we'll get the image from the images folder now if profile is equals equals to null then we'll show the random image of the user and if there is a profile link of that specific user then we'll use that image dot network to show the user image here and if the selected image is not null then we'll show that through a image dot file here i hope that you won't found any complex to write image function here because if you code with me then you will get to know why i have used all this function in the user profile pic here now in the text we'll pass the user name which will get through the user name here now in the name we'll pass a name string where we are getting the user name from the shared preference and the email so it is done so now let's run the app so i will write first flutter clean then flutter run to run the app so let's click to the image now it opens a gallery of my phone where i can select the image through the image picker method and you can see that it frequently changes the user image here now let's move to the other screen and we'll go back to the profile page again so that we can see that if there our image is already present or not so we can't get the image from the profile because i forgot to call the upload item here so that we can save the user profile to the shared preference and to the firebase storage so do not forget to call the upload item function 
in the get image function though i forgot to call the upload item function here so that i can't upload the user image to the firebase storage now let's move to the our food cart page where we'll show all the food items that we have already added in the user's cart from our last video so we will show all the food items one by one and then we'll show the total price of all that food that the user have been added to the cart then we'll allow the user to check out to the app and the money will be directly directed from their wallet and they can successfully place the order for the complete food items but before that we need to also add the backend for our delete account and logout buttons so let's move to the service folder i will create a new file name or dot dot and will write class auth methods final firebase auth auth is equals to firebase auth dot instance now we'll create a function name get current user the reason for calling the get current user function is because as i want to show that if the user have been already authenticated in the app or not so get current user will check that if the user have already authenticated in the app or not now we'll write future and we'll create a function name sign out which will be added in our logout button and we'll write a sync await now firebase auth dot instance dot sign out so we have created a function for our logout button now let's move to the delete account button so in the delete account button we will delete the user data from the firestore database though their data will be stored in the firestore database but their email id and all the authentication method will be directly deleted from the authentication section that i've just shown you in the firebase so we'll write firebase or dot instance dot current user through the current user we will check that if the user have authenticate in the app or not so if the user have been authenticate in the app then we'll use a user dot delete function to delete his profile from the app so now let's move to the profile page again and we'll wrap up our two buttons with a gesture director and in the on tap method we'll write auth methods dot sign out for our logout button and we'll call a auth methods dot delete account for our delete account button so it is done we have successfully added the two backend for our logout and delete account button now let's move to the our food cart screen where i've just explained you how we are at trying to add the backend for our food cart page so we'll move to the order dot dot file but we'll copy the same app bar that we have just used in the wallet section so we'll copy this material which it and we'll paste it inside the order dot dart file so we'll write scaffold body container child column children and we'll paste our material widget and we'll name the text widget to wood cart so here you can see the text now we'll give the margin from the top now we'll give the padding from the top so we'll write padding edge inside dot only top 
may be 60.0 now we'll rename to food cart so here you can see the app bar now we'll create a container where we'll show the quantity of the food item then the image of that specific food and then the price and the name of that food and just below of it there will be the total price and the checkout button so we'll write container child row and in the row which it i will create one more container and in the child text i will show the quantity so for and random i am writing two here and we'll use decoration box decoration border border dot all now border radius dot circular 10 now we'll give the height 70 and width 30 and we'll also wrap up a text widget with a center widget so here you can see the container we'll give the margin edge inset dot only left 20.0 and right 20.0 We'll also give the margin from the top, so we'll write top 20.0. Now we'll increase the width. Now I will get some random image of that food item from the images folder. So I will use image.asset food.jpg and we'll give the height 50 and width 50 and fit boxfit.cover. Though I will call all these details from the Firestore database from the user's cart, though I am just creating the UI, then we'll use our stream builder to get all the food items in our food cart. Now we'll wrap up the image as said with a clip react widget. So border radius dot circular 60. Now decoration box decoration border radius dot circular 10. Now we'll wrap up a container with a material widget. And we'll pass the same border radius to the material widget. And we'll give the size box from the top. So we'll write size box 20.0. Now we'll wrap a material widget with a container widget again because I want to also provide the margin to the material widget here. Now we'll give the elevation to the material widget which will be 5.0. Now we'll give the padding. So here I will show the food name then the food price so i will create a column widget and in the column widget we will first show the food name in our children so we will write text widget pizza and we will give the styling by using the app widget class Now we'll write cross cross axis alignment dot start. 
to move the text to the start position now we will give the width between the image and the text now we will again copy this same text widget and we will show the price of that specific food item basically this will be a total price of that food item according to the quantity the user has been selected we need to center this so i will remove the cross axis alignment from the row so it is done now let's move and we'll show a total price so that user can check out with a total price of that food cart so here i will use a divider which will be the line just below the food items and in the text i will write total price and we'll give the styling to the text by using the app widget class now we'll wrap up with a row and we'll write text and we'll show the total price of all the food items here so we'll write 50.0 and we'll give the styling to this text widget now i want to provide the maximum space between the text and the price so i will write main axis alignment dot space between now we'll give the padding from the left and right position so we'll write edge inset dot only left 10.0 and right 10.0 We'll create a customized button for our food cart, which will be the checkout. So I have created the button for our food cart. Now we will give the height 20.0 so, so that I can provide the space between the total price and the checkout button. Now I want to move the total price and the checkout button to the bottom so that user can see all the food items first and then they can see the total price and the checkout button. So we will use a spacer here and will give the margin so that I can provide some space from the bottom though it get completely stuck with a bottom navigation bar. So now it's look good. Now let's call all the food items from the file store database where we have stored in the user's collection. So instead of writing the stream builder function again and again, I will copy the stream builder function from our home dot dart file and we'll paste it here and we'll rename the function to food cart and we'll create a function name stream food stream here Now I'll copy the same container that I've just made for the UI and will paste it inside the stream builder function. So let's move to the Firebase and I will show you what collection will call in the food cart. So here you can see the user's collection with a specific ID and the cart collection. And here you can see all the food items that will store in the food cart so we'll basically show these two documents here so we'll use our string query snapshot to get all the food items from the cart so we'll write get food cart function and we'll pass a specific user id so we'll write users collection dot doc 
and will pass the specific user id then the collection cart where we have stored all the users food items dot snapshot so now let's move to the order dot dart file again and we'll call the this database function in our food stream so first i will write string id because i need to get the user specific id from the shared preference so we'll write get the shared pref async id equals to await shared preference helper dot get user id and we'll use again a set state method now we'll create on the load so that it can frequently load when the app launches so we'll first call the get the shared preference so that we can get the specific user id then food stream equals to await database methods dot get food cart and will pass a specific user id now set state again now in the init state i will first call on the load function and we'll go to the container again and we'll call a food cart and we'll wrap up with a container and we'll give the height media query dot of context dot size divide by height divide by two so we need to hot restart it again to show all the details in our app from the firebase so after hot restart you can see the two documents that we are getting from the firestore database but it is exact because we didn't call the specific document here so we'll write image dot network and in the ds we'll get the image of that specific food so which will be this image so we'll write ds image now food name so we'll write ds name and the total price according to the user quantity so we have called all the function from the document now we'll also call the quantity of that food item so we'll call a quantity here and we'll give the spacing between the two container so let hot restart it again and here you can see that we have successfully called uh, all the food items that have been saved in the user card from the firestore database so here you can see the quantity 3 name burger and the total price 150 and the second document which is also burger with quantity 2 and the total price 100 now let's move to the total price as i want to show the total price of that food items that have been showed in our food cart so let's move to the total price and here i will use one integer name total equals to zero and we'll move to the document snapshot and just below of it i will write total is equals to total plus ds total where we can calculate all the quantity of that food items and we'll save in the total integer here now we'll call a total integer in our total price so that we can show the total amount of all the food items total dot two string because our total is in the form of integer so we need to name it to two string and we'll add a dollar sign now as you can see that when i will hot reload then it shows a total price of that food item 
which is correct. So it shows 150 plus 100 which is our 250 in our total price. But it is not just the case because as now I will hot restart and will move to the food cart then it is just zero because we are getting the total amount once the app shows all the food items in our food cart. So we need to set state it again as soon as the app calls all the food item here. So if I will hot reload then it will show a 250 here and hot restart and relaunches the app then it will show us zero. So this is a problem that we need to fix. I hope that you understand what I'm talking about. So let hot restart it again and here you can see zero again because it tell us to use a set state again and, and rename the total price here. So to use a set state we need to create a start timer function here and in the timer function I will show the duration seconds 5 and will call a set state here. So let me explain you how this function will work. So if the user will call a food cart page then the timer will work and as soon as it completes the 5 seconds then it say call a set state function and reload this food cart page again which help us to show the total price from 0 to the total that food items have been mentioned here. So in the init state I will call a start timer function or to restart it again and as soon as I move to the food cart page you can see that after just 5 seconds it shows a total price automatically we does not need to do any hot reload to show the total price here. I am decreasing it to 3. Now let's move to the cart again and it shows total price 250 automatically again. So here it is working brilliantly and it is showing the total price of our food items in just few seconds. So now let's move to the our checkout button. Now I want that when the user will click in the checkout button then the money will be directly directed from his wallet. So let's move to the firebase and here you can see that we'll also reduce the wallet from the user's account. So we'll call a update user wallet function which we have already created here so that we can update the user wallet from this function. So we'll now wrap up a button with a gesture director and in the on type method. So we need to deduct the user wallet amount from the wallet that they have saved in the shared preference. So we'll call a user wallet from the shared preference helper method now in the checkout. I will write int amount is equals to int dot parse and will parse the user wallet because wallet money is in the form of the string. So to deduct with a amount we need to parse it to the int dot parse function which will change the wallet money to directly to the integer. Now we will write minus int dot parse total. Sorry, total is already in the form of int, so we'll don't need int dot parse here. So I will try direct minus total here. So async await. Now we'll update the user amount to the Firestore database because I want to update as soon as the user check out and update the user wallet to the user section. We'll also save the user money in our shared preference. So it is done. Now let's hot restart and when I'll click to the 
check out button then 250 dollars will be directly deducted from our wallet and will update the database in our file store so it changes to 1759 i think so it is deleting the huge amount here because so let me check it again so that i can get the perfect idea now we'll click in the checkout button again now let's check so 1259 basically it is not deleting the 250 dollars here basically it is deleting the double of 250 which is 500 so i think so we have used a set state method in our timer that's why it is increasing the total price to 250 to 500 so one thing we need to do is that we need to create one more integer and first store the total amount before it uses our set state function here so we'll write amount to and we'll store the total amount here then it can use our set state now how to start it again So here you can see that when I click to the checkout button then it is deleting the $500 here. So when I will remove the total here and will write amount to and hot restart it again. Now let's click to the checkout button so you can see that now it is deleting the 250 dollars which is the correct amount that have been deleted from our wallet so our checkout button is also working brilliantly and we have also done a complete backend for our food cart page now let's check it again now i'll click in the checkout button and it is again deleting the correct amount which is our 250 dollars so we have built the complete food delivery app from the scratch i hope that you love this video though i have tried my best to explain you in the easiest way so that beginner can also understand the code easily so this is just not a first app that we have developed from the scratch in this channel because we have already created three apps before building the food delivery app so you can also follow the chat app news app to do app where i have also made those app from the scratch and you can also add some more app to your app bucket list and can show that you have already developed a uh, four apps by following my channel and you can learn more about the flutter and firebase by developing these four apps together I will paste the links related to the chat app, news app and to do app in our comment box. So you can directly to that videos and can learn the complete app from the scratch and can build them by using the Flutter and Firebase. Also, I have seen many video related to food delivery app on YouTube, but none of them completed the series. But I have decided to complete this series so that I can provide the complete fully functional app to my subscribers and viewers. I have a small request from you. Please show us some support by hitting that like button so that we can reach the goal of 500 likes and also subscribe button so that we can make the 90% shrink. Until then, keep coding, keep having fun. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.